Well, we should probably do a quick overview of everyone. Yeah, absolutely. So let's start with Josh and then just go around the table. Like five let's, seconds or some shit? No, just... Uh, let's say just a full elaborate life story. Yeah, blood just type. just give <laughs> give the deets of your character and a little bit of the backstory, and then possibly describe your housing situation. Okay, so my character's name is Chance. He's a tiefling, uh, and quick thumbnail sketch of his life. He was an orphan. He doesn't really remember it because he was really little. Another tiefling showed up and picked him up from the orphanage and taught him how to be a, a gambler and a grifter and so he grew up kind of idolizing his father his adopted father um the thing about chances he likes to cheat and when you get caught cheating it's not so good and so sometimes he'd come home all ass kicked from getting caught cheating but still the smile on his face well most recently he was playing with this guy frankie playing a game with zoko and frankie is the son of the fish who's like a local crime syndicate boss uh and Towards the end of the game, Chance started getting kind of sweaty because he knew that if he won, Frankie would take it out of his ass. And he even tried to throw the game, but somehow ended up with a better hand when it was time to call than he had starting, which was sort of strange. One of the things Frankie had bet was a magic book. And Chance thought it was like a magic book. He was like, fuck yeah, I've played that same con. It's a magic book, sure. Uh, but it turns out the book was magic. When he got a hold of the book, he ran home to tell his dad he had to leave before Frankie got there. Frankie killed his father before he could show up. Or he had his goons do it, you know, goon squad. Uh, and the book offered Chance the opportunity to get back at Frankie for just the small paltry price of his soul. And Chance signed the dotted line. So now he's a warlock. Um, yeah. <laughs> he probably lives in a flop house. Did you read the fine print? What fine print? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, oh, Chance... you thought it was a shoe that you sold him? Yeah, right. He lives in a in like a room for rent in a shitty district of town. Uh, that's the place that he crashes at when money's low. When he's high on the horse and he's doing really well, he probably spends time staying at whatever local tavern or pub has the best Mazoko game at the moment. Because he likes to gamble a lot. Okay. So you're a tiefling, warlock, gambler. Yes. All right. And then you live in a flop house. I love it. <laughs> right. All right. Great. <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna make this easy for you, man. All right, Ryan, tell us about Celeste. All right, I live in a flop house in the Lamp District. In the Lamp District, <laughs> yeah, right. that's what we're gonna call it. The Lamp District. Okay, yeah. all right. <laughs> I'm all right with it. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Why? <laughs> There's just a piece of gum wrapped up in something. Yeah. Yep. In my cubby. That's not even mine. That's Matt's. You're sitting at Matt's spot, and Matt's been chewing the nicorette. So these are Matt's. No, I don't things. want it. <laughs> I didn't put that there. Mm, there you go. <laughs> Actually, I'm making right now. <laughs> it is. <you. laughs> take that one. Give that one. Here, take these. Oh, I got it. I got it. Well, but thank you. Yeah, yeah no problem. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Sorry for the distraction. Um. Well, at first it kind of started as a joke. I should play a female character and surprise Matt. Surprise, Mid -game. motherfucker? And I was like, you know what? Matt's first campaign, I can't fuck him over that bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him instead. <laughs> I'll tell you um, what, I'll tell you what, Ryan. At first I was like, oh my god. This... But uh, I'm alright with it. I mean, I'm alright with it. When you DM, you have to play a lot of female characters, anyways. I'm gonna play all. <laughs> and here's Funny the thing: is all males live in this world. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. There's been a catastrophe. It's kind of a weird world for me, but we'll make it work. <laughs> all the women are gone. No, so I'm playing a female human, Celeste. She is a blood hunter. So two different things I've never played. Blood hunters are. Kind of a homebrew class that Matt Mercer made, but they're pretty balanced. And I don't know if they ever officially... They are now. They reworked them all. Mm. Oh, that's yeah. good. They no longer uh, do a ton of damage to themselves? They still do damage Not to themselves. Not a ton. Okay. <laughs> so I have a Hemocraft die that I have to roll, and it's a d4, and I lose that many hit points for some of my things. And I don't do them that often. Okay. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. 
by human, female, blood hunter, and the subclass is Order of the Lycan. So when she was, well actually from birth she was inflicted with lycanthropy, but it didn't start manifesting until later in her maturity, like probably around 13. When mm -hmm. she was a kid her mother died, and we believe it was... <laughs> This is straight out of like, I'm not uh, going to say snaps. it because I've got a lot of <laughs> <laughs> Straight out of Ginger Snaps. Yeah. <laughs> uh, good old Ginger Snaps. No. That was a fun movie. No. Um, yeah, her mother was murdered and her father believes it was through the Brotherhood, maybe another werewolf, but the official reports were animal attack. And we had to go That's with it because sure. my mother was inflicted with the same curse. So that's where I got the curse. Um, the curse is more advanced than a <clears throat> remove curse type of um, the blood yeah, curse. It's like being ability. a tiefling. Shits in your genes. Yeah, it's like a blood curse. That way, Alex can't at level five or whatever go, "Hey, remove your class," <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which would be great. That would be terrible. That would be the best shit ever. It's like no. I would high five the fuck out of him. I'd be like, "Yes, <laughs> you're so, a normie." <laughs> Come work at my shop. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and she already how... does. A, she already has a job. So she's a part-time librarian. She, her father went on a quest three years ago. She had been getting normal correspondence from him pretty much every month. And that stopped about seven months ago. She doesn't know where he is. And she knows he went to help one of her mentors, her sword master. But he's also missing. So her past seven months have been kind of investigating and researching what's going on there, if she can find her dad. She has had no luck yet, and to pay the bills, since he's been gone for three years, she's actually had to take a part-time job. She's ran out of money. So I probably live in a tiny little house, a little shanty. Oh, maybe you rent a room in my neighborhood. The it's Lamp possible. District. The Lamp District. That's a great place, I heard. They got really rent cheap Rent is cheap. Rent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's me. Uh, my character is Nox uh, Kalat and Gux. Uh, his friends call him Nox. Yeah, that's uh, fair. Everybody calls him Nox. <laughs> yep, yeah. everybody calls him Nox. Uh, he was traveling with a group of, uh, well, his tribe, basically. And the uh, they basically travel from town to town, sell goods, buy goods, continue going. Uh, the tribe only moves as fast as the slowest person, and he was slowing down, so his tribe left him in the town that they were in. Uh, Bummer. So the tribe doesn't move as fast as the slowest person. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yes and no. <laughs> they, they choose how fast they go based on That's the right. slowest person they're allowing in there. So uh, he was left there, and he he has some skills. Uh, he's uh, a cleric, uh, and he... Opened up his own shop based on bioluminescence. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff in there that it looks like fireflies in a lamp. But it'll be like actually strings dangling with some bioluminescent organic thing. Sure. And it'll just, you know, swing around as you swing the lamp. And it kind of makes it look like fireflies inside and stuff like that. So that's his main trade. And you live above the yep. lamp shop. Yep, live above the lamp shop. Got a small balcony that I can sit out on. Yeah, it's got two rooms runs out too. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. Mad cash it's off us. Flop house. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. In reality, you're barely breaking even with our money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brian. All right, I'm gonna play a Kenku monk named Oreb. He looks like a blue jay. Um, he. He idolizes a Aarakocra blue jay named Spirit, who once rescued his family a long time ago when he was a little kid. And so he has long since idolized Spirit and is now that he's growing up a bit, learning more and more um, about you know taking on that lifestyle. Um, however, there's a bit of a problem as a Kanku. He can never fly and do all the awesome things that Spirit can do. Um, but he'll, he'll do his best. He is, um, he's employed at Lumen's Lantern Shop, which is the competition to Knox's over here. We do traditional 
uh, fire-based lighting, none of that hanky-panky bullshit, new age fire torture, fireflies shit. nonsense. <laughs> right, yeah. We don't we don't do any of that uh, ethically compromised stuff. Um, Good for you. Uh, in his spare time, he is also a street ma- magician. Um, people seem to enjoy the shows uh, coming by, even in a world where there is real magic. Um, I think partly because everyone knows they're being tricked and they want to see like how it's done, whereas everyone else can like actually magic things away. And so that's a bit of a metaphor for his whole life. Like he can't quite do the things mm. that some of the others can, but uh, he fakes it he, as best he, he can. He fakes it real well, and that's part part of the game. Um, he lives in luxury, a small house, not big enough for roommates or anything, but a very nice. Gilded nest. nest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, said I that just made that up right that now. <laughs> where's, the, where's the nest at? It's on the roof um, of my house. Yeah, right. yeah, it's, on, it's on the roof of the flop no, house. Uh, <laughs> it's, he has a, a tree house um, in the grove of the ancients uh, yeah you got it dude the grove yeah. of the ancients and i love it um it's yeah it's a, it's a grove of these <laughs> really the of the gigantic thing. trees in a park there's like five um, trees yeah there's not many it's pretty exclusive you can't just have fucking riffraff in there and um <laughs> so yeah he he lives pretty far up has to use a a rope ladder of course because he can't fly but uh, it's good for keeping other people up. Yeah, also, like we can't fly. So the Grove shit. of the Ancients is actually right near the entrance to the city. And it's okay. actually pretty big. And yeah. there is a lot of trees there. Nice. And it's, 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 ex- it's extremely it's pretty. Me and it's all a, the squirrel folk. Yep. It's actually <laughs> a place where a lot of people go out and they take their kids out on walks right by. What's that? They go bird, bird watching. watching. They, do, they do go bird watching. <laughs> Sometimes they see. Mommy, I saw it. <laughs> Sometimes they'll see Orb there in his morning stretches and everything like that. <laughs> he's, if you're he's lucky, like, honey, you'll see the king of the Blue Jays. Yeah, he's, <laughs> actually, he's actually one of those figures you, like that are in the town that everybody kind of sees and they, they kind of know, but no one really knows anything. Like, not a lot of things about him, right? You know what I'm saying? Well, sure. he's, Say, a, they, he's a street magician. It's sure. kind of like one of those people you're like, hey, I've seen that guy before yeah, doing yeah, magic. Right? Yeah. You're famous. Especially when I'm a six foot blue jay. What's your um <laughs> background? Entertainer. Entertainer. So that's actually perfect. Just, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the mechanical details of entertainer. I'll have to look those up What's when it is inconvenient. Is? Clan crafter. Clan. I made a made the clan. sage. <laughs> a sage. What is the sage? Sage is like a Smarty Academic pants. research, smart. Sure. Yeah, smarty pants. I like that. And then what's your background? Gambler. Gambler, okay. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, makes yeah. Sense. And then we all got a free feat. What'd you take, Josh? I took uh, Fae Touched. Uh, I can cast... Oh, let's see. Oh, that's where you get a spell I can cast another spell, right? Misty Step and Distant Whispers because of it once a day without using spell slots. Uh, once per long rest. So I learned the Misty Step spell and one first level divination enchantment spell of my choice. I took Distant Whispers and can cast each of these spells without expending a spell slot recharging on a long rest. Not bad. I took Prodigy. A free skill, a free expertise, and a free language. Okay. I think I have more spells right now than a sorcerer did, at my level. What did you take? You took a Mage Slayer or something like that? Oh, uh, I actually took a Magic Initiate. I got uh, Find Familiar and Identify. Cool. What did you take? I took. I also have familiar. Is it feats? Yeah, there it is. I took a new one from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything called Crusher. Oh, Crusher. So once a turn, when you hit a creature with an attack that deals bludgeoning damage, psh, psh, you can move it five feet to an unoccupied space. And if you score a critical hit that deals bludgeoning damage, attack rolls against that creature are made with advantage until the start of your next turn. Oh, sweet. All so, your attack rolls or all everyone's attack rolls? All attack rolls. Attack rolls. It's full stop. Yeah, dude. Pretty rad. <laughs> um, you go on crushing people. We'll take them out for you. Yeah. But in my fee, is it features and traits? Where is it? Maybe the description. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have organization of a couple different things. Personality traits. 
I wrote, nobody stays angry at me or around me for very long since I can diffuse any mom any amount of tension. And I love a good insult, even one directed at me. So generally non Bring it on, I, I, I keep I keep it I keep it ah, mellow. Good. Ideals, <laughs> beauty, when I perform I make the world better than it was. My bonds, I idealize a hero of old tales and measure my deeds against that person's. Flaws Despite my best efforts, I am unreliable to my friends. Nice. I'm obviously going to play up that one as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> what's, my, what's my flaw? Unreliable doesn't mean not loyal. No. It just means no, you're unreliable. Hey, can you make it on time? Yeah, I'll be there, man. Yeah, but I've got bird brain. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> oh, my flaw is really good. Uh, you can own me a little, right? I've got a sure thing. I'll double your money guaranteed. <laughs> so <you're playing> Josh. <laughs> you gonna try to talk it up for us. Oh, Are my... you the face? You're a charisma guy, right? Yeah, I have a twenty charisma. Oh yeah, you're the face. We don't do that. I got the cover, guys. It's cool. I'm the eyes. I also have, if that go doesn't work, I have suggestion too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the brains, and Brian can be the brawn. Cool. We're good to go. We're like the A team and shit. Yeah. We all got our part. I'm Mr. T. <laughs> yeah, I'm the face. <clears throat> I don't know the group, so. Right. I'm the Mr. Smart T one. and the face are the only fun ones. Mm -hmm. There's Murdoch. He's crazy as shit. That'd be you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and then. I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we can all be Mr. T. Okay, so. <laughs> let's start Mr. T's afraid by to fly, giving you a little really more the fool. information about your. Town. Oh, we're gonna finally know what we're doing. Sweet. Yeah. So, well, we're not gonna know what we're doing, oh, but that's never gonna happen. <laughs> no, like, <laughs> like I don't know gonna what you guys come. are gonna be doing. We're still not gonna know. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I gotta bring you all together. <clears throat> no, I already got some of this covered. I know Ryan because when I got the book, I brought it to the library to get it researched, and he's the one that helped me research the book and figured out that it was a warlock tome, and that's what was going on. It's very scary. Yeah, it's super scary. I know Oreb because he's kind of in part of that, like, you know, grifter sort of community. He does card tricks. I'm a gambler, and I deal from the bottom of the deck, just like he can. Maybe I also know Oreb because I like entertainment, theater, and he does all right. Musicians. Yeah, street it's magic. Interesting uh, street magic. And then I live above this guy's uh, lantern shop in one of the rooms that he rents out. Apparently I do, too. <laughs> <laughs> Bam! Done, Matt. You're welcome. And we know a bit about uh, his lantern shop because that's where all the bioluminescent torture happens. Right. Sure. And do you guys hate each other? No. I mean, you're just a clerk, I, right? I, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a jackass that works at CVS. I don't care about <laughs> the owner of Rite Aid. You're like the guy that works at Lowe's who sometimes goes to Home Depot when their prices are better to buy stuff for home yeah. improvement. Mm -hmm. You don't get the employee discount. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> this is where it all comes <laughs> undone. Here's, here's the end of my campaign. Uh, anyway, so uh, you live in the world of Ilios, right? Ilios. And Ilios has been um, extremely peaceful for the last 3,000 years. It's almost a utopia, right? Um, and, in, uh, and that's because... Uh, this one town that you live in, Emmerich Heights, um, is kind of just this epicenter of uh, philosophy and, and you think the old Greeks, right? Like all those good old philosophers, right? Um, and Emmerich Heights is actually named after one of the, the, the legend of uh, Mason Emmerich. And he's in the, he was uh, known as an old monk adventurer. There's actually a huge statue um, that was put up in tribute to him and all his uh, his his um, abilities to bring the world together. I mean, he was he's uh, the avatar. He's mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> he was the guy that was able to bring together the four kingdoms in the world. Right, we got the Fire, Ab Abencaster, <laughs> Abencaster. We got Osdale. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. this is not important. Yeah. Abencaster. 
Yep. Abin Caster. That's the Fire Nation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Osdale. That's the Earth Kingdom. Osdale. Wayfield. Oh, that's definitely water. And then Repulse. Repulse. Right. How do you spell it? <laughs> Just like Repulse? Uh, yeah. RuPaul's. <laughs> RuPaul's. <laughs> RuPaul's district. RuPaul's. He brought that. So, and uh, they're, they're big into trade there. It's a port town. Uh, the size of the city is like 250,000. It's pretty large um, for the world. Uh, so, uh, the kingdoms, the elven kingdoms, everything in between, they all get along mostly without any conflict. They're able to. They're able to uh, work out their differences before there's really any kind of war. Not to say that there's not room in the world for adventurers. There's always going to be lost treasures to find. There's always going to be secrets to unveil. There's always going to be hobgoblins doing hobgoblin things, right? But in general, the world is pretty peaceful. They stick to the roads and nothing, for the most part, bad happens. Exactly. Alex. Exactly. Speaking of inspiration. Oh, nice. Thank Ilbeard. <laughs> or thank you, Ilbeard. I God. do have ideas for inspirations. Oh, I like ideas. Yeah, but we'll get to you them. Use them to level up. We'll get to Ooh. them. <laughs> we'll get to them later. But for now, we'll play them. <laughs> I'll use them all it's... to re-roll my ones, anyways. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Um, no point leveling up if you just die. Mm-hmm. The 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 town or the city of Emmerich Heights think colorful. Colorful <laughs> flags everywhere. Um, the it, it's the, a flag with a, a fist in the middle of it. A, you know, Fisters. and there's no real colors. There's just it's just unity, right? Think unity. Um, one of Mason Emmerich's <laughs> uh, philosophies, which is uh, know that you don't know, is plastered everywhere, right? I definitely stole that from Socrates. <laughs> sure. Oh, but it's the thinking. Know. It's the it's it's the constant thinking and looking for more knowledge. And in that you can find kind of the true answers, right? You know, all about the golden rule, treat others as you've been treated, or mm. do you like to be treated? Stuff like that. It's it's all about coming together, working through problems. Before any kind of conflict, because that's the that's the ultimate evil there. That's what's going to tear the world apart. Uh, there is a kingdom. It is now ruled. By, it, it is ruled by King Rogel, right? And he now presides, and everybody likes him for the most part. Like you know, there's always going to be people that be hating. You know, but for the most part, he rules. He rules. He rules. He rules. He's, he's okay. He's not too shabby. How do you spell R O H? Uh, R A U L. Raul. Raul. Oh, right. uh, that was right on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Brian uh, totally got that one right. It's been a <laughs> long week. I didn't get it prepped as much as I wanted, so it's just going to be all at the top of the dome. Nice. I'm taking. Josh's approach to this, right? Good luck, man. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, I did let you in on a bit of the mystery. So, uh, we're just going to say, yeah, a little bit. So, everything's been peaceful. Everything's great. Um, The peaceful mystery. So, about about a week ago. Oh, right. I remember that part. About a week ago. Well, the second moon. A moon showed up. That's just appears. just another one. One night, it kind of just appeared. Blipped. Did it just? Right. Did it? Did it appear on the other side of the world and rise suddenly? Say, or did, did we of, see it? It kind of like it started off small in the distance, oh. and just kind of started moving towards. Oh, oh yeah. that's scarier see? than I thought. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you ever see melancholia? Oh my god! <laughs> You're By right. moon, you mean extinction event? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. But 
it's you said settled it hasn't in. really affected the title. It hasn't really had any effects at all. Maybe okay. a little bit. Maybe the tides. Some Armageddon shit. Hologram. Bit, uh, uh, the tides are a little bit close. more uh, yeah. tidy. <laughs> They're a little bit more Tide. rough, right? Everybody, you know how the full moon's in effect. Like, everybody gets kind of crazy. Everybody's mm, just a little bit more amped up. A little bit, right? Yeah, it's not right. that, like, on a full moon. like that. That's like, at good. a bar night, people are kind of crazy. Sure. It's a thing. I would have been a bartender. It's definitely a thing. They get yeah. a little bit more hyped up, right? They want to stay out just that much longer. Uh... <clears throat> from what you can tell, it doesn't really go through phases, right? Like, it's only been a week, but you can't... It's still been bright. Just maybe, a full moon yeah, all the time? the normal moon has maybe started to crest, right? So, that's what's been going on. The king's stance right now is, don't panic, don't worry, we're looking into it. You know, these things happen. Press one to hear the recording again. <laughs> These things happen. Calm down. These things happen. Magical things happen all the time. That's what Josh said. Josh, yeah, magical said. things happen all the time. So, Not a so maybe we should go around thing. and let's <clears throat> initial thoughts. So, Josh, your my thing is like. We live in a world where magic is a real thing. Magical shit happens all the time. I'm not worried about it. Somebody's gonna figure it out. I'm sure it'll be fine. Business as usual. Yeah, I have other things to do. Right. Oh, right. Fuck. That's definitely like opposite of my character's approach. <laughs> I gotta so kill, how would you? I gotta kill the fish's kid, Frankie. So how would uh, <laughs> Celeste feel about a second moon? So my flaw mm -hmm. is I overlook obvious solutions in favor of complicated ones. Nice. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure that this might directly relate to um going on with lycanthropy oh, maybe it'll affect it directly maybe it's not caused by it but lycanthropy okay so oh, very, yeah. um, okay because we're her werewolf werewolf yeah you know. and i'm a little worried about it to be honest i'm a little worried about it especially if it's a full moon and the people that can't control their inner beasts unlike me who usually Sorry, guys, in the future. Usually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. That'd be a little worrisome for me if it sets people off. If it makes a turn. To them. Hmm. Sure, sure. How uh, would Nox feel about a second moon just appear? Hey, that's luminescent. Yeah. Uh, he spends a lot of his time out on the top balcony, kind of looking up at the skies that night, so... He's probably been watching it for a while and uh, been kind of just talking to Helm, which is his deity, about it. Sure. And Helm's the god of protection, right? Is I that so? Yes. Is that. I know he was. Protecting your noggin. Like, is Helm, Helm duty? I think Helm might be Ooh. duty. <laughs> duty, too. <laughs> but I don't like religion. <laughs> so I will say, like, I'll go off of like gods that are like definitely like D D canon and stuff but i'm probably gonna mess up and that's fine. make some of my own up sure. like, they say uh, you can make as many gods as they want. right like, is right. it isn't helm duty helm is also known as the vigilant one and the watcher god of guardians protection and protectors love it worshiped by guards and paladins both so do you think helm Nox is fearful of it is he kind of Indifferent to it. Uh, he's more, what does this bring for us? Is it good or bad? Sure. Do I need to offer protection for those that are close to me? Sure. All right. What's your race again? Lizard folk. Uh, All right, Aura. Okay. That's why you're on You've been Aura sitting up in, their, in the nest. <laughs> so open I've, sky. I've had a lot of time to think about it because since the moon showed up and we've got this full moon all night, demand for lantern lighting's his fault so i got let go Ooh. um and so i've had yeah. a lot of free time lately um but i'm beginning to think that maybe that's an okay thing because whatever this thing is it's obviously a big change and something that people will remember for a long time and this whenever great changes happen and it's the time of heroes and the, the chance to prove myself there you go and to go get my own statue in the center of Orb Heights 
I mean, Emmerichites. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been three days since the moon showed up. They let him go. They're obviously looking for any excuse. That's right. Shut up. Like, this guy's got to go. <laughs> They're like, second moon. You're fired. <laughs> yeah. And out. Okay. So. Oh the new moon provides too much light. We don't need as many lanterns. You're gone. <laughs> that would be my complicated solution for a simple <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, I work for someone just like you, apparently. <laughs> apparently. All right, so let's see. Where should we start? Let's start with uh, the morning. It's a new day, and it happens to be Celeste's birthday. Cold. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, How old am I? <laughs> I am, well, I was 27. Fuck, I'm 28. God damn it. Old, <laughs> old hag, past I your prime. I hate my birthday. I'm 42, man. Don't worry about it. So, yeah, you don't you don't like your birthday. It's I'm just, 11. It's, a, it's another day <laughs> that you, it's just another day. You really haven't been able to celebrate your, your birthday the way you've wanted to for a few years now, right? Because you haven't had your dad, your mother around. Am so I too, it, um brothers they're not brothers by blood they are adopted but right they don't live with us right and they, they have a bio mother and they have a different connection with each other than they have with you right they have a stronger connection you might feel a little bit left out but you still feel the need to you know stick around protect them stay in, in, oh, involved absolutely. as much right They're still blood so you are still going to be going to work today yeah, you have to. There's no. Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah, you you Do have. That. Yeah, right. You have no, no option but to not work and get as much money as you can just to stay afloat. But at work, you will have some downtime because it's a library and you do you can do research if you want. I, I almost don't do any. Honest with you, because there's you nothing find to books. do. No, you probably sit and read. I sit and study and read and research all day long, and it is awesome. Right. I tell you, this is the best part-time job I've ever had. And you said that he, or sorry, she would live in one of the rooms upstairs from my shop? Sure. That's how I bumped into her and was like, hey, you're a researcher? I could use some help researching this book. And I work in the library. Oh. So I Laziest pickup line ever. <laughs> <laughs> Knox is definitely making a cake for Celeste. Okay. Let, me try, let me try again. Hey, sweetheart. How's it going? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this is what I was trying to avoid, but I Oh, we're going to make Matt so uncomfortable. I know, dude. Like... I'm going to lay an egg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat the egg. No! <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Fucking bioluminescent my ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Helm approves. <laughs> <laughs> So you you're gonna be going. So you're waking up. Uh, you're kind of rushing out the door, and uh, you're on your way to go to work at the library, which is kind of like you work at the second oldest library in the city, right? And you don't really have like a lot, but there is a definite nostalgia to your library. Um, it does have a lot of older books or older copies of books that maybe the only King's Library would have. So there is some knowledge, but it's kind of a niche knowledge, right? Like just old time history stuff. That's what you specialize in. You do have the other books for like the fantasy, right? A fantasy within a fantasy, tales and stuff like that. But for the most part, you're, you work in a history specialized library. Sweet. Do you have a name for it? Oh, um. I got one. All right, go. The Knowledge Nook. It's right there. Do you like it? I take it. Okay. <laughs> it's the Knowledge Nook. Is right? it can, like Knowledge Canook with another silent K? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. Absolutely. The Knowledge Canook. <laughs> That's a little too many Ks. Like two is enough, three is too many. <laughs> the name of my shop is Knox's Knights. Nice. Too many K's going on. <laughs> sure, sure. So, uh, 
Uh, on your way to work, what do you do? Do you pass by anywhere that's familiar? What do you? Yeah, I mean, every day I pass by this crazy entertainer who's always on the corner begging for change and doing card tricks. And that's probably at like 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it's 10 a.m.? So... So, or like, who goes to work at 10 a.m.? How me, do you keep your time. job? How do you keep your job? <laughs> part time. This is bullshit. <laughs> See, we should do it earlier and I'll be on my way home. No, I got 7 a.m. Yeah, right. 3 a.m.? 9 a.m. Too early? Uh, I'd go like 7. I could be by my way back. Me I figure I've been up all sleeping, night. I'm sleeping, man. <laughs> okay. Getting Josh's It's my birthday, it. damn it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's Celeste's <laughs> birthday. Okay. So. We'll start with Ryan walking out his door. It's a it's a gorgeous day. The second moon is just kind of very faint. You can see it, but it's it's one of those day moons. It's really faint, right? But you really don't think too much about it right now because you're thinking about I'm running late. your birthday and you're running late. Uh, you happen to see um, Knox out on the balcony. He's kind of getting ready for his day. You see... He just lays around all day and collects my yeah, money. Yeah, he doesn't really mm-hmm. notice you, but you see him. Um, you're probably thinking about what cake you're going to make him and possibly bring it to him at work later on when mm-hmm. you have a chance. So you run out the door. You see people walking out. Everybody's doing their thing. They're going in the morning. They're going to work as well. They're drinking a little coffee. Rushing around, you see some kids getting ready for school. Um, everything seems like a pretty normal day. As you approach your library, outside of it is Oreb. And he is just getting his space ready to start, uh, to get ready for his magic show. So I'll walk up to Oreb. So you've changed your location? Or- oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wanted to be a little closer. I had a question. Hey, did you get that new Spirit comic book in yet? I'm sure I can find out for you. Oh, that'd be great. Okay, yeah, I'll just wait right here until you, you get it back to me. This is a library. We don't... You want to come check it out? Sure! I'll vouch for you. Okay. I follow him in. So... He's a little hyper. <laughs> 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 I go sit down next to somebody and start doing magic tricks, whether or not they want them. <laughs> hey, pick a card. Any card. <laughs> this one will work. Okay, good. So uh, you walk in with Aura to, uh, to the, the Knowledge Nook with two Ks. So this comic book that he loves, yeah. in my spare time, what I do is a little bit of art and calligraphy. Uh-huh. I make these comic books. Oh, I love it. I, I just do it in my spare time. And he gets so excited about them that every time I see him, I have a new edition. Love and it's, it. It's always about this badass female character. Right. right. Spirit comics. Spirit is his spirit. male oh, Eric O'Brien. There. Yeah. But there maybe is there a spirit in it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Spirit's definitely in it. But he's the sidekick. Oh, okay. He, I wasn't sure if Spirit was a sidekick or if you're just uh, gender bending the character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Heard, but I gotta keep up with what's going on. Okay, so it's about this badass female character. It's about this badass female character, and Spirit's the sidekick who is always bumbling around and making big uh, mistakes. But <laughs> through the lens of your hero, worship. are you like the kind of person who thinks that Robin is the main hero? He obviously of Batman? is. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the bats but are just the rats' most, wings. He's the most lovable character in the comic. And I don't know why he likes these, because I'm not the best artist. But I don't tell him who actually wrote it. Sure, sure. And you always keep the next copy mm-hmm. ready to go in the right side of your desk. I have a backlog desk. because I am so, <laughs> so bored at this bored job. At this job. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, exactly. I actually have like the next 52 issues. Right. Oh, excellent. Excellent. <laughs> so as you walk in to the Knowledge Nook, um, you see all the aisles. They're mo- it's, it's mostly clear uh, of people right now. It's still pretty early. Maybe a couple old timers having their coffee at a little coffee table in front of a window. Uh, that's their little hangout. Um, we'll call them Ed and Bob. 
Right. Ed and Bob come in most First mornings. First casualties of the campaign. Right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> this library is going to burn by the end of the session. I know it. Uh, it's pretty dimly lit, uh, except for the Those few windows. windows does it use? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of luminescence That's do right. you have going on here? Bio-luminous? Do you have fire is, in a is, library, or do you torture fireflies? It is oh, fireflies. torture it fireflies is, all day. Yeah, it is <laughs> bioluminescence for sure. Sorry, uh, or, right. sorry uh, Orb. Right. I mean, those assholes fired me. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm his new favorite plan. That's right. Place. You might go try to work for the competition. Oh, this is, I got an inside expertise. Mm-hmm. The smell of your library is just like an old, old library, uh, old, old book. Like it's probably pretty nostalgic and good for you because you probably like to read a lot. That's why you took a job at the library, and it's comforting to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's probably pretty obnoxious for a bird, though. I would say. Or do you like it? you like that smell of the nostalgia? The musty Yeah, because he rips smell. books up and puts it in his nest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, take, I take books home occasionally. <laughs> he doesn't borrow the book. He takes books home. I bring most of it back. But there you go. It's, the, it's my part-time job. I also, like Oreb, don't fucking care. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who's next to get fired? <laughs> On my birthday. <laughs> you guys come work for me. I'm self-employed. <laughs> so you're, uh, make you life money. imitates art, <laughs> imitates right. life. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> so when I get there, um, I'm going to go back to the back counter, act sure. like I'm ruffling around with uh, rustling around in the back, and I'll pull out issue number 40. Woo! <laughs> I just leave the person behind that I was talking to and I go grab it. This just came in. Ha ha! Oh, yeah, this looks great. I haven't read it yet, but... Oh, oh this looks exciting. I go sit down at the table. I would just sit down at the table and read it. Paper, like toilet paper or something. <laughs> um, and as you're handing him the, the comic book and he takes a seat, uh, you see your boss. His name is... John. Uh, his name is Jeffrey. Jeff. Yep. Oh, no, no, it can't I'm be sorry. Jeff. That's the name of my octopus. Oh, it is? Yeah, so, it's Jeffrey. Maybe, maybe turn him into an maybe octopus? Maybe you named your octopus after, after this the guy. Boss. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll call him John. John the, the, John the Keeper. He keeps all the books, right? <laughs> he walks up to you. <clears throat> uh, oh, from this day forth, a... <laughs> all toilets shall be known as John's. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He's an older gentleman. He just wears pretty earth tone colors, robes, right? And he walks up to you and he says, Oh, happy birthday, Celeste. Thank you, Mr. Woodward. You're late again. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's my birthday. I smile. And I'm not like the most charming person, but I'm Oh, just God. Like... <laughs> well, I'll tell you, they were. Uh, Ed and. Whoever his name was over there, Bob, they, you did not get their coffee. They were pretty disappointed. And they've been running up a tab for a week. Do you really care? I suppose it doesn't matter. Why don't you go take your seat? Okay. And I'm going to sit where I usually just bought like five different books and stuff. <laughs> All right. So we're going to switch up a little bit. So you're you're sitting, you're getting ready, you're drinking your coffee, comic book. You are waking up, okay, with a nasty hangover. That makes sense. I need some coffee. What's your name? And you know where to go to get your coffee, right? Of course, right? I go to the Nook. You got to go to the Nook, right? Especially because you know it's one of your friend's birthday today. Oh, did I get something for her? You did not. Well. Maybe now's a good time. Do you have sleight of hand? <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> you might want to check your... I know exactly what you're thinking. <laughs> so you get out of your... Uh, I don't know. You'd call it a, a nest. It's just a bunch of blankets. Sure. <laughs> right? And you got to make sure you have some cash on you to buy some money. I have 15 bucks. buy some money. Oh, you do? Did you lose it last night? Mm, what do I roll? Should I just? I'll I can say lose it. odds or yeah. evens. Roll a give me a d twenty. D twenty. See how many gold you have. Eleven. Eleven. 
if you rolled over a 10, I was going to, or under a 10, I was going to say you lost it all last night. But you actually, it's fine. you actually won. You actually won last night. Sweet. You got, you get another 15. You double your money. I doubled my money. Nice. Just like you said you would. Double that money. <laughs> you only have to do that 40 more times and we can retire. <laughs> so, That's right, yeah. So even though you're hungover today, you're feeling pretty good about life. Yeah, man, it was a good night. Right? You had a great night last night. And where did you say you lived again? I live above Knox's Lantern Shop in one of the rooms that he rents. Okay, that's right. That's one of the, uh, the nasty flop house. <laughs> it's Knox's house. So we live, in a flop, we live in a flop house? Yeah, we do. <laughs> he just calls He's it a, a flop house. He's a slumlord over here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I'm, I'm staying at Knox's place. Okay. So do you, do you, is there another balcony at this place? Do you guys... I mean, I'll wave to him on the way to the pisser. If he's out in the balcony, I can probably see him down the hallway. Sure, absolutely. You do see him down the hallway. Morning, Knox. Morning. All right. I go hit the head. Drain the vein, so to speak. I come back out. So it's uh, it's Celeste's birthday today. Ah, probably ought to do some more. Who's doing the thing? Is that you? It's yeah, gotta be me. you. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's Josh. that's always me. I, I, like, I was like, I can't tell, but I'm assuming it's you. Still, for more than five minutes, probably. Uh, yeah, so we ought to do something for her, probably. I planned on making a cake. I figure uh, most girls like something shiny, so I'm going to go find some jewelry or something. Maybe that is I'll, a good idea. Maybe I'll even buy it. That would be preferred. <laughs> 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 All right, so I, uh, I okay. walk outside and so look around. You walk outside. We're going to switch to Alex real quick. We're going to... Alex, uh, describe your kitchen to me here. Uh, you go to your kitchen. You got to start making this cake. Yep, it's probably uh, very crude. Uh, it's got, you know, a bucket of water and uh, eggs fresh from the farm kind of thing. It's just very much, it's not good looking. It's, you know, bones and sure. leathers and stuff like that. Yeah, you've probably got a Pretty lot crude. of that bio stuff going around yep. that you're kind of threw aside because it wasn't the right fit for the lamp you're making at that time and you may have forgot about it, received some more stuff and started working on that, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'd say he's pretty tidy, right, mm -hmm. for a lizard folk, yep. but it's still cluttered, right? Not really. For a lizard folk. Yeah. It's racist. It is, sure <laughs> is. Get ready for it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Stereotypes abound. But Where yesterday... exactly did you get those eggs from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bought them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but yesterday you went to get all the ingredients mm -hmm. uh, for your cake, and yep. now you have to make it. And how do we roll for making a cake? Well, mm. if you don't have cooking skill, then you roll... Poorly. That's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> you I almost maybe took wisdom. the cooking feat from Tasha's. Oh, nice. That would have been cool. I almost took it. Wisdom is I've got cooking utensils as my, my tool. Oh, so you are proficient. You can cook. I can't, I can't cook. <laughs> I, can't I love cook. it. <laughs> so, just roll a d20, see what I get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you have any bonuses, what would it be? Survival? Oh. Um, <laughs> I mean, I would probably let him put his wisdom modifier on there, right? All right, we'll put your wisdom. Okay. Well, let's hit three rolls. First one was nine, second one was 20, not natural. Last one was 10. You make a pretty decent looking cake. Nice. It's it's great. Nailed it. <laughs> you wrote happy dry and full of razors, there. but it looks and nice. You spelled it, it looks, right. Yeah, you spelt it right. Mm -hmm. it, it's just a one layer cake with some frosting and it looks delicious. So good job. You passed the cake making portion of the campaign. I'm glad nice. that was the first roll. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually the second. Was it? Oh, yeah, no, Josh won the Josh won some money I won last, some money night. last night. Right. Mm -hmm. This is going well for he's, us, guys. He's mm -hmm. thinking maybe he's going to buy the jewelry. I might buy it. Maybe he won't. Yeah, so I'm going to put a sign up at the shop, be right back, and head over to the library once I have the cake done. Excellent. Excellent. So we're going to switch back to Josh. Yeah, while he's doing the cake, I'm looking for jewelry. Yep, yep. And there's only one place to, to, to buy jewelry in the 
the Lamp District. Okay. And that place is called... <clears throat> Shanko? Shanko. Shanko. Yeah. (laughs) Shiny Treasures. Okay. I go there. All right. And uh, Valerie is the lady who runs it. She's just a middle-aged, you you know. Nice. Yeah. She's just a middle-aged cougar, right? Hey, darling. She's totally divorced from her husband. She this took the, the oh, she took the store shiny treasures the after the divorce. <laughs> Sweet. Dude, this is right up your alley. This is right up my alley. <laughs> yeah, I'm all like, you're 42. You're looking for them cougars. Hey, darling. Oh, hey, sugar. How you doing today? Good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm just doing fine and dandy. It's just a perfect day outside. It but did you wonderful. see that moon up there? I did. Yes, I did. I have no idea what's going on with that. Well, but I'll tell you what, it sure is pretty. Like you. <laughs> You're too <laughs> much. Oh, but I don't deal with scoundrel like you, and you know that, and I'm keeping my eye on you today. Well, you know what? I'll just keep trying. You can't sure. blame a guy for trying. So what brings you in today? Well, I'm looking for uh, something shiny for my roommate. For your roommate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she lives down the hall. We both rent a room over over at uh, Knox's place. Oh, yes. It's All her right. birthday. All right. Uh, so, uh, w- she gets w- super cold. Did she yeah, like yeah. <laughs> right away. Yeah, that one only fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and what uh, and what do you think you'll be getting her today? Well, I don't know. Just something, you know, shiny and pretty. Uh, so, uh, would you like this tennis bracelet? And she brings out. What the like, fuck is tennis? A tennis bracelet. Sure, Basically, sure, sure. It's, you know what a tennis A golden is. bracelet. Just, yeah. Right. Well, how much would that cost me? Oh, this would cost uh, this well, about uh, five gold. I'll take it. You drive a hard bargain. Really? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, she there's takes, five gold. Bam. She takes your five gold and. Puts it in the register. Now, I do expect that at some point, uh, you'll allow me to buy a dinner for that that great price you gave me on that piece of jewelry. With what I saved coming here and talking to you, I'm sure that I'd take you out and show you a night in the town. What do you say? Uh, I'm going to hard pass on that. I only have a gentleman <laughs> caller uh, that I've been seeing for some time now. And she gives you a wink. <laughs> <laughs> but keep trying. I will. Don't worry. All right. See you later. Sugar. All right. See you later. All right. Okay. Go get some coffee. Fuck her. So, <laughs> you gonna get some coffee and fuck her? No. <laughs> I heard it. That's what I heard. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna keep trying. <laughs> I'm gonna make a tea <laughs> thing and <him> coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so you walk out the door, and the city's getting a little bit busier. It's getting later in the day. And uh, the streets are getting crowded, and uh, for the most part, it's just a normal, great day. As you're walking down the street to get to the Knowledge Nook, um, you see up in the distance, as you're walking towards him, some guy, just he's just, he's a little off. And you know this gentleman, his name is Luke. And... Luke's always been a little bit crazy, but today he seems a little bit extra crazy. Extra crazy. And he's, <clears throat> you can hear him shouting, oh, can, he's going to for person to person as they walk by. Have you, have you seen my dog? Have, have you, have you seen my dog? He's, he's a, he's, he's a little lab. He's, he's about three years old. He's, he's black head and people are just passing him by, passing him by. Just, I'll stop. Okay, crazy. Oh, hey, oh, Luke. yeah, hey. How's your day today? Oh, it's not going so well. What's wrong? I though? haven't found my dog. I can't find him. I haven't seen him for days. Have I ever seen Luke with the dog? No. <laughs> okay. I'm like, well. Not right. that you can recall. Well, where's the last time you saw him? Uh, it was, it was, oh, I can't, I, 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 I'm not sure. But I, I, but I know he's had his dog. I, 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 I know he was I, I think it was about and he pulls someone else hey, have, you, have you seen my dog? Luke, Luke, leave these good people be I tell you what friend uh, why don't you go meet me at the local bar and uh, I'll stop by and buy you a drink and we'll sit and talk about how we're going to find your dog All right. oh no, he's been gone way too long how long he's, has he been gone? I, I feel like it's been a, 
maybe a week. As, as I wonder about the stew I had at Knox's last night when I came home. <laughs> <laughs> and as you as you are having this conversation with Luke, uh, a, a young lady goes, uh, kind of w- grabs you by the shoulder and whispers in your ear. He doesn't have a dog. All right, friend. I'll tell you what. Uh, why don't you keep looking? I'll come back and find you later on this afternoon, and I'll take you over and grab you a bite to eat. Oh, yeah, m- m- maybe. Uh, maybe if you see me uh, later on. Uh, I mean, I'm just, I'm so worried about him. Oh, yeah. I understand. I would be too. I had a small puppy once. And, uh, you know, he ran away from home, and I was also worried about him. But usually I come back. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I head on to the nook <laughs> All right. after I disengage. So you're going to the nook. And I'm going to say that you're done with your cake. It looks very good for you. And you're picking up your cake and you're walking to the knowledge nook to say happy birthday to your favorite roommate, whatever it is. Tenant. Yeah, tenant. Tenant. Yeah, tenant. Yeah. That's because I actually pay my rent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so do I. Not always on time, but still it gets there. And with my own money. <laughs> Well, once the money's in your hands, it's all your own money. <laughs> Possession is nine tenths of the law, friend. That's right. That's right. And you're on your way to the knowledge nook. Mm-hmm. Nothing really happens to you. It's just a normal spring, spring day. Nice spring day. It smells great. <laughs> and we go back to the library. Now we're at the knowledge nook. And the, it's been about an hour since you've been there. And everything is what it is. It's boring, as you see. You're probably sketching. I'm actually your, go very ahead. entertained because I'm re-reading an old book about the tidal cycles and the moons. Sure. Ooh, and my. this is not boring. I don't know what you're talking. This is the best place ever. Sure. Sure. It's like that time I worked at Borders. <laughs> <laughs> I never got a paycheck. Right. <laughs> oh, and yeah. That was nice. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Special order, whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> and in walks your friend Chance. Um, I honestly probably don't even notice. <laughs> hey, darling, how's it going? Oh, Chance. Uh, what brings you to this part? Well, you know, I was walking by the window and I just noticed... It looks like you got something in your hair behind you here. Here, might help you. And I'll slide a hand the bracelet. Wow, that's very nice. Happy birthday. Oh, it's for me. It is for it's you. So, yeah. It's, hmm. What a gaudy color. <laughs> that's what my eyes are saying. But I'm like, <laughs> that's very, what is it? Well, it's a bracelet. Oh. Hmm? Let me try it on. I hope it fits. If not, I know someone who just for you. Snap it over my wrist. Does it fit or is it's it a loose? <laughs> nah, it fits pretty nice. It's so shiny. Oh, shiny treasures. Yeah. Oh. What's the person's name? Is it? Shit, Valerie. 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 Yeah. You know old Val. She yeah, is I've dear. She helped her pick own. it out. Of course she did. I was hoping maybe this afternoon, after you get off work, I could take you out for a drink or a meal or something like that. Oh. Like. Hey, that'd be oh, awesome. Can I come too? Yeah, or yeah, why not? We'll have a birthday party. All right. We'll have a shindig. Oh, oh here. You party. can have your comic book back. It was pretty good. There was a lot about the, the lady in it this time, but I think Spirit's still pretty cool. These, these are great. I can't wait till next week's. How tall are you? Walk off. Uh, like five feet tall or something? Yeah. Should be small? Yeah, pretty small. Not small, like, that's that's pretty small, small, small but not small. <laughs> small, but not small. <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. It's kind of weird because I'm actually. Six well, Orib, where are you going to be later? We'll swing by and pick you up. Um, well, pretty busy day. Um, let's see. Got a couple of things to solve. What What time are you thinking? Someone will be on the corner right there with <laughs> me all the time. Oh, uh, never mind. I'll come find you. Oh, 
Okay, yeah, He's I'm actually, sure that'll work. <laughs> yeah. He's shopping right outside the library. What time, and what, he doesn't really like that much. What, what yeah. time do you get off, dear? <laughs> Whenever. Never mind. Whenever Oreb's around. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, my god, I mean, what? <laughs> what I meant to say was, what time does your shift uh, end? Right. Um, I'll find out. I'm not All sure. Right. I'll sit here and wait and drink my coffee. Okay. Might be waiting a while. For you to find out when you get to get off of work? Oh. Oh. You want me to go find out right now? I right. don't think that'd right, too up. long. <laughs> All right. Let me put a bracelet. Yeah, no problem. It's my pleasure. Least I could do for uh, my roomie on her birthday. All right, Mr. Woodward. <laughs> can, can I work a devil? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, yes. Is he around, by the way? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's sitting out front. Yeah, he, he sits the down. Counter. Actually, uh, uh, John Woodward, right? That's his name now. Uh, slides uh, you a little bagel that he, you know, brought to, to work. Oh, thank you, John. He didn't need to eat it. Today. I appreciate yeah, it. No. Uh, yes, no You're problem. a gentleman and a scholar, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, have you said happy birthday to Celeste? I did. I gave her a gift, too. It's oh. very uh, old. Oh, <laughs> Maybe it's silver. Uh, so, <laughs> silver. <laughs> and, uh, well, where'd you happen to get that? Well, I got it over at uh, Shiny Treasures. Oh, I'm sure Val helped pick it out. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sure you did. He kind of knows what's up with I you. I give him a little wink. <laughs> uh, uh, <clears throat> Celeste, uh, there was a gentleman that came in uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, he's wandering the, the back corner. Uh, oh, sure. You mean... What was his name again? No one. Oh, I'm this talking about the guy who was looking for a dog. No, no, no. Oh. He hasn't he hasn't been in. This, this is a different I thing. looked around for Oro. <laughs> Where's Oro? <laughs> I I you're probably looking, you see the door <laughs> I step outside. Yeah. Oh, out the front door. That, that alleviates some of my concerns. Alright. Uh yeah, your nose was buried in that book again and come on, you're not paying attention. You oh. totally missed him. He's just wandering in the back. Well, we're a library. He's here to look at books? Well, uh, I would... Oh, you wanted me to attend to him? Uh, yes. Okay, I can do that. Okay. So, just as you... Uh, he goes back to his little office area, and as you're about to go help this gentleman in the back, your friend... Happy Knox birthday to you! Happy birthday to you. I gotta sing the whole thing now. <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday, dear Celeste. <laughs> Happy birthday <laughs> to you. And many more. Uh, she actually blushes out of embarrassment <laughs> for them more than anything. <laughs> well, thank you, Knox. How'd you... How does everyone know it's my birthday? I don't. At that point, I, I pop my head over and I mimic your voice exactly. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. I see. <laughs> I know how everyone knows. It's my birthday so now. good. <laughs> I didn't remember telling him that. Um. A little birdie told me. Okay. <laughs> Vanilla. Ooh, thank you. You're welcome. This is like the most disappointing birthday I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're crying, but they're not tears of happiness. You're just like <laughs> I just wanted like a peaceful day in the library. <laughs> I got my roommate hitting on me. I got well, Orem's actually just Orem. He's the only normal one here. Surprisingly, <laughs> he's a walking bird man. I know. Oh, there's nothing wrong with Max coming and singing Happy Birthday. Oh, he's so... taking time out of his day. Yeah, not mm -hmm. collecting my rent money. <laughs> <laughs> Such a hard life. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Woodward should just pay him directly. Yeah, sure. right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably all my money anyways. That's that's a nice cake. Thank you. And uh, in the library, even. <laughs> well, 
Um, did you bring something to cut it with? I got something. Very well. I want to set it there, and I point to the table that I've already forgotten about this guy in the back corner. Like, yep. he is out of my mind. <laughs> yes. yep. Yeah, I'll set it down. I flourish a knife. I hand it to you to cut. Okay, you cut it. And make sure you get a piece there for Orb. I'll bring it out to him. I would just like yeah. a very tiny sliver piece. But it's and, your birthday. You don't want a larger slice? Maybe I'll have a little more later. Can I keep the rest? Yes, yeah, so I'll leave it here. Thank you, Mr. Knox. You're welcome. This is a very nice birthday present. I'm very glad to see my friends here today. Um, yeah. Oh, I was supposed to... I'll be right back. And just as you remember about the guy... I didn't remember about the guy. I'm oh. going back to ask Mr. John okay. when I end my show. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll get Orb to come in. We're like, hey, come here, Orb. We got some cake. Oh, great. I like cake. Yeah, come on in. We're all going to have oh, these. Right. I should uh, head back to the shop. Oh, is this... Well, let's, let's cut the cake first, and we'll all eat a piece here, and then we can all go our separate ways until later on. We're going to have a party for her. Uh, you should in come, Mr. The Knox. library. <laughs> no, no, we're just going to have the cake now. We're going to have a party, like, get together later on. I know this little spot. It's great. They've got a good game of Mazoko going on out there. Yeah, it's called oh, the Drunken Monkey. I'm not allowed yeah, in the there anymore. The dr- you can't go to the Drunken Monkey. No. Why not? <laughs> uh, they said I'm not old enough. Seems weird to me. That's all right. I'll square it with the owner. Don't you worry about it. Oh, okay. She's square. Can I have some cake? Yeah, here. Mr. Knox is cutting up some pieces. Okay. And just as Mr. Knox starts cutting the cake, a loud crash comes from behind or from the back corner. Where... Fuck, I forgot about the guy. <laughs> he probably <laughs> fell. Oh my god. So He's gonna die. So I, I pull my octopus off and I put him on the floor. I go, Jeffrey, go see what that is. So Do you Jeff- keep that with you everywhere you go? Yeah. Oh my god. I ran out the front door. <laughs> it's like you're out. You're like, fuck it, gone. <laughs> so your octopus. How fast? I didn't do it. Not... I didn't knock it over. I don't know. I'm sorry, Let's Mr. Woodward. A lot slower on yeah, the Yeah, because I'm going to say, like, it's this is speed. like. It's like 45 inches an hour. <laughs> right. Let's see. Well, it's not that. It, uh, octopi can move fairly uh, familiar. It's fast. Just like... It's not like a snail, but it's not much it's better than the snail. Octopus. Speed five feet on land, swims thirty feet. Five feet. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, it's like, you know, so you're like, go figure what's that his out. Name? What's his name, Jeffrey? Jeffrey? Yeah. <laughs> Jeffrey, go see what that is. So you you let Jeffrey loose, and he just <laughs> pops on the floor, right? <laughs> and he's like, and he just kind of, it's one of those, right? And you, yep. The other tentacle comes, and he starts going. And you see this, and there's no way that this octopus is going to beat you to the corner. All right, come on, Jeffrey. And I pick it up. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, what? I pick up the thing he always has on him. It's like a spirit familiar, right? It is, yeah. So it doesn't look like an octopus. Did anyone say spirit? Yeah, it does. It's an octopus. What color? Doesn't it have like a translucent, spirity look to it? Familiars look like regular animals. They don't look different. They're, they are spirits, but they look like the animal version of what they are. What color is That's Jeffrey? Jeffrey? Yeah. Jeffrey has chromatophores. Okay. Right now, he's the same dogs. color as her shirt. <laughs> All right. All right. So a nice um, spring yellow. All right. Spring yellow shirt. And so you, you, as you walk back there, you hear some rustling around and you kind of hear this... It seems like he'd be tripping over all these books and everything like that. And as you walk back, you do and turn the corner of the bookcase in the corner, uh, the back corner, uh, one of the bookshelves has fallen down. Oh, dear God. (laughs) I, uh, fuck, don't make a strength character, guys. (laughs) I crushed it with a bookcase. (laughs) Um, Books are everywhere. All right, so my first reaction will be to see if there's anyone under the bookshelf. And there is. And it is uh, a middle-aged gentleman. Uh, Sir, are you all right? Are you all right? I rush up to there. Is he conscious? Oh, yeah. Is he crushed? He's just under the bookshelf. 
he's not. You don't was think it a full bookshelf? Oh yeah. Oh. Well, well, one of the no. I would say about the size of this guy right here. Right. Mm, okay. That thing fell on me. I'd but be there's a, a bad day. <laughs> but there's a lot of books. Um, little help here, please. I yell. Okay, so I wander around. Slowly the walk over. First, I look through Jeffrey's eyes and see what's going on. Then I'll wander over. You see, you see uh, a, a middle-aged man, bags under the eyes, uh, long dark hair, uh, simple garbs, right? Uh, trapped me, under the bookshelf. Uh, he's lanky. He's kind of skin and bones at this point. It seems like he hasn't been eating for a while. Can you hear me? Oh, <clears throat> uh, yeah. Are you uh, all right? Does anything uh, feel broken? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm so sorry about this. Can you help me up? Um, little help, please. Okay, so I'm in. Come on, Knox, let's go take a look. I'm yeah. so sorry, Mr. Woodward. It definitely wasn't me this time. No matter what, I, I wasn't anywhere near it this. Or uh, there's, I, I definitely not. Go, I was all the way over here. I was just going to have a piece of cake. Orub, and I was Orub, like, it wasn't about you this time. Yes, of course it wasn't. Okay. I didn't suspect it was you. That's good. Come on, fellas, let's I go did. help out. <laughs> That's why I look mm-hmm. for Aura. <laughs> Come on, fellas, let's go help out. I take the whole cake. <laughs> nice. <laughs> We're gonna go. Thank you. <laughs> We're gonna go help. <laughs> All right. So you go and you see this man under the bookshelf. And I'm trying to like I'm pulling books out, right? Sure. Is it open both end bookcase? Uh or is no. it the closed it's, back? It's, at, it's it's got a closed back and it's up against a wall. And he's kinda like <laughs> head spilled out from being crushed. Yes. Oh yep. my god. Yep. So I'm like trying to move books around, but not trying to move it too much. And I know for a fact that I cannot lift this book with my simple weenie nine strength. Right. But I'm going to try. I'll yep. help out. Okay. So, so they'll see me um, struggling so with advantage, to try to lift this. Go with advantage. No. It's a negative one for me. Me too. No. It's a ten. No. So ten's not quite enough. Anyone well, else? I'm helping pick up books because I look at the shelf and I like they got it. I can get rid of the bookcase. <laughs> oh, what? Oh. All right, no, all right. <laughs> Let's keep lifting, folks. <laughs> <laughs> or put your back in, son. You Come know on. what we should do? We should make some kind of lever. And or- does anyone have a big stick we can put under it and lift up like a? Come on, or Come on. Help Help my out. walking stick. That I take the stick. I'm gonna use my brain instead of my brawn, and I'm gonna to try to get some leverage of something to push. Oh it up. wow! How did you get down there? Oh, orbit. Just help me lift the bookcase, son. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, I could do this. Okay, yeah, I can help. Come on, let's I'm do it. I'm help. This is your I'm time to help. be. A, this is your I'm time help. to be a hero. <laughs> yeah, it's time to be a hero, dude. <laughs> yeah. Time to be a hero, motherfucker. Like, shuffle down, get, <laughs> get my shoulders down under, and I try to stand up. I'll help you. Do you remember issue number fifteen? That's right. Do you remember issue number fifteen? Yes. How spirit came and um, helped lift that wagon off of that person in the road. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, true story, actually. I saw him do it. Exactly. And I'm, like, trying to lift up with the um, large staff to put it under for leverage. Okay. Uh, you want? We should roll something. I could do this thing, but I was wondering if it oh, would be good. helpful. Mm-hmm. So I have this thing called Tentacles <laughs> of the Deep. <laughs> <laughs> you probably don't want to do that. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, never mind. First of all, I'm <laughs> holding your octopus. Is, so don't that's do like that. the, <laughs> the worst porn maneuver. <laughs> Tentacles of the deeps. Well, I won't do it. I'll wait. I'll hold that and see. If we can't do it the normal way. Okay, so we're gonna try to do it the normal way. So we have to lift the bookcase up, and then someone has to put the stick under the. Well, there's but, probably room under the bookcase. You kind of jam the stick down, so the there. bookcase is leaning. The stick goes here, right. and you lift up. And yeah. It's like a crude lever. Okay. All right. Fulcrum? Uh, sorry, it's a it's a lever. Yeah, more of a lever. Let's just do a 50-50 D20 roll, just to see if you do Don't it. Don't give me the 50-50. Let the Who hero the do it. Let the hero do it. Hero! Um, are we going, like, a, 
11 and above or the odds and, even? Okay. 11 and above. Oh, he, his poor legs. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to help. I thought you were going to help. I am <laughs> helping from the most <laughs> He lifts it up, and then all of a sudden, it's like, yep. and it shunts yeah. back down. I'm like, <gasps> oh, LaVista, save us. This is horrible. The guy kind of goes, ah, oh, ah. Oh, oh, uh, all right. Give, give, me me Je- Je- give me Jeffrey. Stand back. I got a plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? Fuck planning. I toss Jeffrey underneath the bookcase, squirt some water under there for him, and I say... <laughs> Jeff, do your thing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so this is a question for you as a dungeon master. Yeah. <laughs> I can magically summon a tentacle that strikes at my foes. Why? What are you doing? <laughs> can I just use the tentacle to push the bookcase over? Yes. Okay. So I will summon the tentacle. So I squirt the water. Jeffrey disappears into the water and out of the water as if it were a portal comes this massive tentacle that just pushes the bookcase off the guy. <laughs> Almost like... Just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it just pushes it over. Up against so the, wall. the tentacle comes up and it just... <laughs> just <laughs> shunts the bookshelf. All the rest of the books just fall out. They're, they're on the floor. They're everywhere. Oh, the, look at that. The guy I start picking up the <clears throat> slowly gets up. Call Jeffrey kind back of falls back down a little bit. Boop. I'll try to hold. Good him job, up. Jeff. Oh, are you hurt? Oh, I, yeah, um, I, yes. Thank you. Um, were you trying to it, climb the bookshelf? What happened? Oh, I was <laughs> victim blaming. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not really sure how it. it it's it, my it job fell. on the line, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Uh, I, I'm not really sure how it fell, but I was here. Let me help you up. Sir. Rushing you around up. trying to find up, books. I think I might have just. Uh, excuse me. Let me help you up. Uh, yeah. I'll I'm, brush them off and shit. Well, yeah. I'm help up, and I'm gonna roll a sleight of hand. Um. Okay. Roll a sleight of hand. Cool. What are you? Were you looking on them? I mean, I'm just brushing them down, but I'm looking for a purse. Or a money pouch. This is an old man who got crushed by a bookcase. <laughs> yes, it is. And his wallet could have easily fallen out while That's that happened. That's right, exactly. Unfortunate things happen all the time. 19 plus 5 is 24. First <laughs> light of hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's when he rolls well. Yep. Not when you really need it. Uh, all you find is, like, you just feel a little piece of paper in his uh, back pocket. That's it? Yep. All right, I'll tuck the piece of paper away. My paper now. <laughs> it's like a picture of his grandchildren. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Can I take a look at it? Is I'm making the transfer without being conspicuous, or uh, he he's looking right at you right now as you're helping him up. Okay, so I don't. So you don't want to. I give mean, we're all away your eyes you right real now. quick right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll look later. Right. And uh, he. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so I'm so no sorry. Problem. I did no this. No problem. No one was here back here to help me, and I was. I was uh, just scurrying around too fast, and I'm so sorry about that. It is a library. I don't always attend to everyone. (laughs) Hey, now, Celeste, I don't think he was saying anything untoward. I think he was just saying he was having a hard time navigating the shelves on his lonesome. Yep. And he goes... Oh, what kind of help did you need? Well, you I think I know where a certain book is. I can help you with that. Well, I think I found it. I, and he goes, I already found it. And and he dives down to the ground where all the books are. And he's looking, he's looking. And... I'll bring him over one at a time. Is it this one, sir? No, no, no. That's Do you know the title of it? One. That's not it. <clears throat> is uh, it maybe this one? You know, I just, uh, I just remembered. Uh, and he, as... He's screwing around. He's just like, I guess maybe it's not here. Uh, maybe it's not here. So I'm going to go like I'm looking down among the books and stuff like that and kind of turn away a little bit. And while I'm doing it, I'm going to peek at the paper and see if there's anything that I want. If it's not, I'll right. pretend like I picked it up. Right. Um, everyone roll their perception. Oh. <laughs> Kills. Oh, my face is all the way over there. Sorry, we'll use this one. Is it based on smell or sound? (laughs) (laughs) I get advantage whenever it is. It's sight. Okay. 22, 23. Nine. Should I almost slide a hand to see if I can pull it off? What's that? Should I almost slide a hand again to see if I can pull it off? 
without them seeing, I won't, but I'll try. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Nope, 16. What do you mean? Or 17. So I'm trying to hide it, and they're trying to see it. He thinks that think, our perception is based on what he's doing. Yeah. So I don't he's, know. If he's, oh, he's no, 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 no. I'm not, it's not oh, about you. By me. No, okay, cool. it's not about you. All right. It's oh, actually so I see that too. So <laughs> perception. Mm, 17. 17. Yeah. Everybody sees it. He's not too. He's not being. He's trying to be as sneaky as he can. He's rushing around. But you see him. He sees a book and he slides it under. <laughs> he says, like, he's like, he grabs it. He so while he's down there, I'm going to put my hand on his shoulder. Um, well, you know, what was your name, sir? I'm sorry. I, Marcus. Marcus. Um, at this library, there's a small fee that everyone needs to pay to come in and peruse the books, but they're not actually allowed to be taken out of the library. I don't, I don't have any money. I don't have any. I, I don't, I'm, Chance I'm, has money. He'll pay for your fee today. <laughs> it's only a small two silver fee. <laughs> It is my birthday. No, no. And he's <laughs> starting to back up. That's my charm right there. He's, back, <laughs> he's, starting, terrible. he's starting to back up towards the door. I go, he, he's like, um, it, it's, it's, it's all right. It's all right, sir. I'll pay for it. Don't worry about it. Here, let me let me give you some gold. I'm going to walk over to him. I'll pull my money pouch. Yeah. Right? All right, I'm going to hold my money pouch in my left hand like this. And then I'm going to try to lift the book off of him. Is it in his hand or did he tuck it into some place? He tucked it into his. Yeah, I'm going to try to get it. So I'm like, don't worry. I'll pay for your fee. Boop. Okay. Like the old watch trick when you shake somebody's hand and then I'll sneak their watch. Mm hmm. 22. Yeah, you do it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I'll pay for your fee, no problem. Boop. I lift the book, stuff it in my own whatever armpit mm -hmm. under my duster. And I say, here, it's a gold on me. Don't you worry about it. Um, okay. And he gives it and he hands it to you. Hey. Yeah. Now, for a gold, he can take it out, can't he? Just let him walk out with it. He'll come back. I'm sure he will. He's an upstanding citizen. I look back. Is John around? Mr. Woodward? No, he's in the back office right, right now. <laughs> all right. You go ahead, sir. You go ahead and prove that book at your leisure and just bring it back when you're done. Okay. Thank you so much for all yeah. your help. And he kind of looks for at you. For a 19, can like... I slide of hand a different book into his pocket? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> That's exactly what happens. He steals the It's book. a bird watcher's guide. I take it, yeah. As We're he, such a good team. We're so he, good. As he, as he slips the book out, you slip the book in. It's just as easy. <laughs> You're helping him pick him up, right? And he slips out. And so he, he, he gets up and he goes, thank you so much for all your help. I heard it was a birthday. Happy birthday. And he's backing up. Hey, Marcus, do you want to come to lunch? What's that? Do you want some cake? No, I'm. Uh, I can't, I'm trying to get rid of it as fast as I possible. Can't, I can't stay right now. I gotta go. So uh, thank you so much for your time and happy birthday. If you come and back at lunch, chances by him. As he's backing up, he hits the table where the old, <laughs> the old geezers are sitting and they spill their coffee. Oh, and uh, he just look back. where you're going, fella. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry, so sorry, Mr. Woodward. I definitely didn't night. do it. Have a good night. Have a good night. <laughs> and he. When he gets out the door, he starts running down the street. Well, let's see what he was so uh, excited <laughs> about. So I pull out the book that he had. What book is it? So the book, the name of the book is called The Seers and Me. The Seers and Me? The Lovers, The Seers and Me. Yeah, there right. you go, dude. <laughs> yeah. The Seers and Me. The Seers and Me. Okay, and I'm going to look at that piece of paper he had in his pocket. And the, the piece of paper, um, mm. it just has a bunch of... It's like a decoding piece of paper, right? Oh. So there's the, for every for every you know character, there's like another letters character. or a couple letters or it's huh. just a, how to decode something to decode a, this. Well, I'm not the messages. smart one, so. Oh, hey, you want me to handle that, Mr. Chance? What do you got there? Actually, I was thinking about giving this to Celeste because she's the reason. Oh, yeah, it is her birthday. And it is, yeah, it's her birthday. So I think, oh, you know, here. Dude. Yeah, so I'm going to wait Where'd she until go? Celeste gets back. Um, and then... Must be at the potty. <laughs> so uh, did, how good of a look do you look at this? Do you... well, I'll give it a pretty good one. Okay. over. And um, at the, the bottom of it, in, in bottom. horrible handwriting, it says... Uh, uh, 
uh, kind of like you kind of figured that he scribbled it down. Mm-hmm. Uh, needs uh, need Firefly. We need a Firefly. Hey, Mister Knox, <laughs> you don't happen to have any Fireflies, do you? Oh, burn on me. Well, can you maybe run back to your store and grab some? We'll, we'll see if there's anything else that needs to be done here, and then I can go back to my shop, yes. And you, as you're doing that, you're helping the the old gentlemen that have coffee now all over their their mm-hmm. garbs, and, and uh, you see Mr. Woodward come out. <clears throat> Celeste? Uh-oh. Celeste, what is all this racket? Happy birthday, motherfucker! At this job, um, Mr. Woodward, I'm, I'm extremely. Well, this gentleman came in and pulled a bookshelf on himself, and then. Oh, that ju- that guy is long gone now. He's he was a crazy man. I don't want to tell you. <sighs> yeah, he was out. He was out of his gourd, but don't worry, we got rid of him. Uh, he spilled their coffee. He spilled the books. And he just ruined my birthday, I'm going to be honest. He was a hot mess, sir. Oh. Oh, dear. And he goes, he's like, you're making him feel bad. I know. And he knows, he knows that's what you're doing, right? <laughs> I'll try, I'll try to smooth talk him a little bit and make it good. And I'm like, that man was, he was wild. Uh, I've never seen something like it. Like, he reminded me of my good friend outside who's looking for his dog and doesn't have one. Like, that guy was out of his gourd and... I just, I can't believe that uh, people like that are roaming the city without help. So I'm going to roll deception. Yes. <laughs> 17. 17 does it. Oh, all right. <laughs> hey, guys, your... do colors smell differently to you? <laughs> Not now, Orb. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Celeste, help, um... help your friend Nax... Help these gentlemen out. Get them all cleaned up. Get them some fresh coffee. Get back to your station. And please, if any more customers come in, help them out. He goes back to his office. Mm. I mean, he went back to his office. So <laughs> Here, here's the thinking book about that, eating that slice of cake that I got. Here's the book that gentleman was looking for. And here's a piece of paper with some magic coding that he's got on it. I'm thinking there's some kind of secret code in this here book. And since I know that stuff's right up your alley, happy birthday. I hand you the book and the decoding uh, Um, You can see a difference in my eyes. This is the most elaborate birthday present ever. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Which is still on, by the way. But it's starting to rash up my wrist a little. (laughs) (laughs) Because it's over. (laughs) I'm just like... (laughs) That is... That's a really nice, thoughtful gift. Chance well, put all this together. Guy. He Did invited that, that crazy guy, guy in just to see this mystory, just to give him a present. Friend. What a good guy. I wouldn't put it past you. <laughs> Mr. Chance, he's a well, good I, guy. I wish I could claim that one, but I uh, know this is all just spontaneous. like the best presents that just kind of came about on its own. The gods must be looking out for you. Hey, Nox? I wink at you because I know you're a cleric. But we need some of them fireflies. I so wink we also can. because I now know your secret. <laughs> <laughs> that he yeah. set all this up that for that elaborate right. birthday present. That's right. What a yeah. good guy. <laughs> well, I'm going to head back to the shop. You wanted a firefly, correct? All right, we need some fireflies. Yes, yes that's what so we're looking I'll for. Get you a firefly. Thank you so much. Yeah, if you can get a firefly lantern, bring it back over here. Oh, uh, you want it back here? Well, Celeste can start on the decode while she's on her shift, and me and Orb can clean up this mess. I gotta go make sure no other guests come in. Mr. Woodward seemed pretty serious about uh, it. no other or, guests. Or, we help or, him I'll out. I'll watch for the guests. If you wanted to go help him clean up, that would be the best birthday present I could ever ask for. <laughs> You're so mm-hmm. fast. I'm sure we can get all these books back up in that bookcase in no time flat. Sure. Horribly Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, boy, I horribly, wish I could read. <laughs> horribly Michelle. We're just putting shit up there. <laughs> you, you hear... But all the blue ones are the top. I, all the red right, ones? Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> that makes sense. You hear John in the back. Make sure they're in alphabetical order. Got it, Mr. Woodward. No problems here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they know their ABCs. <laughs> so, Celeste, you have this book. I have this book. What's it titled? It's called The Sears and Me. The Sears and Me. 
That's Love interesting. Sears and me. Okay. I will. What's this piece of paper? It's the code. It's the so it's like one of those ciphers where it's got like letters on top and then other letters underneath that actually make the message. You know, okay. M equals T. Right, like one of those secret decoder rings. We just need fireflies to make it work. And on the bottom, it was uh, in different horrible handwriting. It said, "Need fireflies." Right. Need fireflies. Here's and that's why I sent Mr. Knox. We'll get some fireflies. And this book is pretty thick, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to take you some time to get through it. Okay. Well, I am on the case. About to about to delve in and forget there's anyone around me. And forget my job <laughs> again. <laughs> I'm a terrible employee. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Celeste, are you at your desk? Yes. I just say nonchalantly. So you, you I don't even down. look up from my book. <laughs> so you sit down and you open your book that you just got. The old men are talking away. And what are you doing, Josh? Sorry. For the most part, this is, it just looks like a normal book. Uh, it's... <laughs> this is not distracting Sorry, guys. at all. <laughs> I'm just like looking at your hands. What are I, you doing? Now's a good time okay. to reset Let's my sweet. watch. <laughs> for you. I'm, good? I'm good. I'm done. I'm okay. done. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's over. Now. It's over. Oh. I didn't know it was going to beep. So, it, <laughs> But once it started beeping, you didn't change your <laughs> No, I figured fuck it a minute now. Let's <laughs> get it done. <laughs> so you look at the Sears, and for the most part, your knowledge of the Sears is kind of like everybody. It's like a one of those tall tale things. Mm -hmm. Like it can be real, it could be real. Who are the Sears? The Sears are like, um, they're legend. You hear them in the legends. Everybody goes to the Sears to, you know, um, for advice to see the future. Free cause, man. To to see the past, to see what. To help, for guidance, they just will help guide. Right? And are they a sect? Is it a fable, of like old man on the top of the mountain that you go and seek guidance from? Right. Okay. Exactly. So it's not There's, an actual based in reality. It's more like yeah. tall tales. Right. People and, might design their little um, not real magic tricks around. Yeah. Exactly. Oracles of Delphi, kind right? Of. So and everybody's got their own stories about them. Um, there's six of them, you know, and they all have huge eyes and they look down upon them. Some people say they're a bunch of tieflings. There's like three tieflings. No one, no one really has a good story. Um, but you have this book and it's just kind of lists all these tales about them, right? So it's kind of like a, the tales of the seers. I guess the first thing I would try, I mean, I don't know how elaborate this actually is, but the first thing I would try is I would just count out the um, number that the letter would correspond to. Kind of one, two, so three. you look, it, it's printed all in common language, right? So you don't see this code anywhere in the book. I mean, Firefly. Mr. Knox will be back directly, I'm sure. Coming back? Well, I asked him to. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Maybe I'll go check on him. Okay, I'll be right here. All right. So once we get all the books shelved and get those gentlemen some coffee, I will go to Knox's shop. Get some fireflies, because he's not coming back, I guess. Are you coming back? Eventually. Oh. Like, how long do you wait? Uh, well, I'm probably going to go there, and then I'm going to, you know, look through the stash and pick out my favorite ones, and... Okay. Well, if it takes you, like, less than half an hour, you'll probably be back before I'm going to clean the books up. Mm, okay. I'll probably be back before then, then. Okay. Got <clears throat> a small case uh, that has, like, a door that you can open, and the fireflies fly around in there. Sure. So, you go get them. 
Mm-hmm. Well, he said he's coming back before we're probably okay. going to show the book, so okay. he shows back up. All right. It's kind of taken him a little bit to get. He's old. He a little moves a little slower. A little, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Is it's it cold probably outside. it's a cold outside? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> he probably gets uh, distracted because he sees a snail and he's like, "Oh, maybe, maybe this snail would be good to put on a lamp or in a stew." All right. So if he doesn't make it back by the time we're done, I'll go get him. Right. Yeah. He's not making it back. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I go get him. Or if you wait here. Okay, I got this. Don't you worry about a thing. Mm-hmm. Are you going to be doing any performances? It's kind of been a... No. It, it's been about um, two or three hours. I'm going to finish up as, right about when Chance leaves, but I, we did such a good job color coordinating the shelves, I'm going to move to the next shelf. Yeah. <laughs> job over. <laughs> How to make sure your friend is free to adventure. 101. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This friend's not that mad about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can tell she puts a lot of care into her job. So Chance is taking. So Chance leaves. Mm-hmm. He goes to Knox. I look up and it's just Dora. I'm like, I look back down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm whistling. And and John comes out. Yep. I don't even notice him to be honest. <laughs> He looks down at you, looking at the the book. Right, you're reading about the seers. So I actually have the seers open, but I still have my other book open, and I'm kind of going in between both of them. Right, and and you you're concentrated on one of the first stories in the book is the a, a tale of obviously about Mason Everick because it was uh, one of the one of the most common stories about the Sears is Mason Emmerich went to the Sears to get guidance and they told him his future and what he needed to do to bring peace to the world. Right? But no one really puts too much faith into this story. It's just kind of a fun tale. Right? Um, and as you're reading about Mason Emmerich and the Sears. John comes by. He kind of gives you a dirty look. I don't see it. He's getting frustrated right now because in the back, he turns his head around and he sees <laughs> Orab. Yellow? Yellow. Color coding the shelves. Yellow. Yellow. What's going on? Orange. Or- Orange. Orab. Yellow. Orab. What are you doing? This probably catches my attention. I hear um, it. I. Um, who said I mimic back Mr. Woodward's uh, voice right back to him uh, saying to uh, pick up all the books and put it back on the shelves. Nice. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't get smart with me, bird. <laughs> oh, wow. The B word. <laughs> Holy <Yeah. shit. laughs> Celeste. It's like the N word. <laughs> Celeste. <laughs> I'm just kind of like Yep. Why aren't you helping your friend <laughs> do your job? I'm pretty sure we already did it. What's going on? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Look at everything. Oh, I'm not done he's, yet, Mr. Woodward. Don't not, you worry. He's I'm not organizing sorted. anything. He's deorganizing everything. Well, technically, he <laughs> is um, slightly organized by color, it seems. <sighs> Reds and blues. And do the colors smell order, different to you? It's actually supposed to be put in order by color. It's supposed to be put in order alphabetically. I don't really trust that system either, but nothing against the system. Celeste. Yes? <sighs> I think you need to take the rest of the day off. Thank you. What a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be the correct response. Thank Give me you. an insight roll. <laughs> Total of 20. <laughs> okay. You can definitely tell... You're on extremely thin ice. Well, thank you for the birthday present, I guess. I wouldn't consider it a birthday present, but just come back on your next shift. And when is that again? I didn't remember. I don't remember the schedule. You know, it's it's two days from now. I'll look after the shop. 
Did you want a piece of cake? Already had one. Oh. Please just leave. Or we want to get out of here. Please just leave. <laughs> <laughs> he gives you a dirty look. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a great, wonderful rest of your day. Okay. Woodward. Sure. Uh, fine. And he goes and sits down in your desk. He finds a, a couple drawings that you've been sketching and shoves them into your drawer and you guys leave. Wait. You took the book in the decoder? With you? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not very good at hiding it. I'll bring this back on my next shift. Thank you so much for the birthday present. Just go. We'll see you in two days. I trap back with the case of fireflies, and Mr. Knox. Are you coming back with me if I come to get the fireflies? Or are you going to stay in the shop? I'll stay in the shop if you're just uh, grabbing the fireflies. I'll try to convince you to come. Mr. Knox, it's a mystery, sir. We might need your exceptional wisdom. Yes, but who would watch the shop if I leave? Well, I'm sure if you're... If you're absent for one day, everybody gets a day off every now and then, and what's a better reason to take a day off than your friend's birthday and a mystery to solve? Every day's a day off if you enjoy your... Well, this could be a day, an extra off day, sir. <laughs> Come you on, have Mr. enough Nuts. of those for both of us. Oh, sure I do. <laughs> Why don't you bring your friends back here? All right, I'll do that. Your friends. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. I cut that too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, so I go and get these guys, and I, I try to round them up and bring them into the shop. Okay, so then you go up, and you're headed up to, what's the name of your shop again? The Knowledge Nook. Oh, that's oh, the library. Knox's... Knox's Knights. Knox's Knights. Knox's Knights. And you, no case. you entered in, and you see that Knox has a little jar of fireflies. Yeah. Case. There's probably about 20 on there. I mean, I grab it and I leave after we have our little whatever conversation and try to find these guys back at the Knowledge Nook. All right. So you bump into them and... As they're getting kicked out. As they're getting kicked out. <laughs> All right. Hey. Come on. Let's go back to uh, Knox's shop and see what we can do with this with the fireflies and this decoder. Okay. Mm, sure. Yeah, that sounds good. Hey, do you think, uh, are we still going to do lunch? Yeah, we'll do something. Don't worry. Okay. Then yeah, I'm good. I was going to have more of that cake, but I lost it. I lost it? Let's go. <laughs> All right. Fine. Let's go. So where are you headed to now? <laughs> back, to, back to the shop to do our decoding. Sure. Uh, on your way to the shop, uh, a, little, uh, a little kid approaches Orb. And this little kid is at all of your shows when he can be. Oh, repeat customer. His name is Timmy. Timmy. <laughs> Timmy. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes. Mister, Mister Orb. Oh my gosh, what are you doing? Are you doing a show today? Um, always, always. It's always a show. Yeah, oh, right now you... is um. Uh, yeah, it, it's part of the the prep. We're we're a traveling band of mystery. Hey, son, watch this. Now, do you guys know what the coin muscle pass is? Um, is that a weird sex act that you can only find out about on uh, no. Urban Dictionary? Nope. Okay, it's when you take a coin and make it fall up by squeezing it between your hand. I did some research and uh, in advance for the a character, but you squeeze it in your hand so that it pops up, and then you grab it at the apex of the jump with this hand, so it looks like it falls up into your top hand. Boop! And it's a neat little trick, and then you can move from there to the coin grab from behind the ear, All right. or you can do the thing where you, as you're turning your hand, you let it fall into your sleeve, and then have no coins in your hand. Hmm. Um, so I'm going to do a muscle pop from my, like a muscle pass from my bottom hand to my top hand with a coin. I'm going to slip it into my sleeve when I hold my hands out to him, let my hand drop and grab the coin, and then pull it out from behind his ear. Okay. 
I see you've met my apprentice. What are you rolling? Uh, sleight of hand. Okay. I figure it's a sleight of yeah, hand roll. That's fine. So 18 plus... Where is it? 18 plus 5 is 23. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, you do it without... Because he's he's super focused on an orb. He just thinks sure. orb is like the coolest looking uh So I'm like, well, I'll do, so I'll, do, I'll do it. And then instead of pulling the coin from his ear because he's looking at orb, I'll pull the coin from behind one of orb's feathers. <gasps> oh, you're magic too. Yeah. Well, uh, he's my apprentice. Teaching me everything he knows. I don't yeah. think... I don't think Oreb's ever done anything like that. That's it's, super awesome. It's, you know, we save those things for the special occasions. That's right. Like when Timmy's oh. come to visit. Oh, what's your name, sir? My name is Chance. Nice to meet you, son. Oh. I'll shake his hand. Oh, my name's Timmy. Give it back. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it, but I didn't. <laughs> I mean, he still some old, weird men that are crushed by a bookcase. What, what, I mean, what for sure. Put a massive <laughs> no, <kid>? not kids. <laughs> That's your line? That's my line, not kids, yeah. <laughs> it's a decent line, in general. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> so he's just wide-eyed and amazed, and you can hear his mother call out, uh, and you would know her uh, by name. Her name is Glenda. Timmy's mom, Glenda. Glenda, on the other hand. Glenda. She now, Cougar? Timmy. <laughs> I don't care. Timmy, we, we got to hurry up. We got to go back to your father. Uh, Aura, thank you for doing some tricks for little Timmy. Does she have any jewelry on? Oh, oh yeah. She's got a nice necklace. But no rings or bracelets? Nope, just a necklace. I don't think I can probably do the necklace in plain sight without anybody seeing me. Well, without <laughs> making it kind of awkward. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Always pleasure to see you, Mrs. Burns. Oh, yes, yes. And uh, we'll see you next time you're in the streets for your show. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Okay, and they, she grabs Timmy by the, the the collar because that's the only way to get him away from Oreb. I give him a high just, feather. <laughs> he gives a high five and he keeps on oh, just hey, as he's walking away. Before you go, yeah, you got something, son. Oh, right but, behind your ear. I'll oh. pull a copper out and hand it to him. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> there you go. Mom, look. That's nice, Timmy. Kids' ears are Let's a money get factory. going now. <laughs> Let's go. And Wash your hands. <laughs> and he, she walks <laughs> and she walks away and I mean always looking I'm sorry about last time Mrs. Burns <laughs> 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 and you continue on back to uh, the nice lad Knox's Knights the flop house yeah. the That's flop right. house he's around a lot he's a good kid yeah, I think I'm going like... to take him as an apprentice one day too there you go good idea then you'll have two of us mm-hmm Start okay. school, so or a school of witchcraft and wizardry. <laughs> so you got you guys definitely get mm. up to the apartment <laughs> where Knox is, or the store. You're probably are you in the store or are you in the? I'm probably tending the store at this point. Okay, you're in the store. That's probably where you keep all your <gasps> fireflies and stuff like that too. Mm-hmm. So you walk into Knox's nights, and it's full of lamps, ready to be sold. All with fireflies in them? I don't uh Oh. Uh, that'll be up to Alex. Yeah, usually once the lamps are actually made, I do a thing where I replace whatever the uh, fireflies use to illuminate <laughs> with like a string <laughs> that has that stuff on it. <laughs> so it actually isn't fireflies itself, but they're they look like fireflies inside. I'll pull the book up by actual fireflies. Yeah, I got a bunch of them right here. And I'll just flip through the pages. What were you doing, Brian? Eating fireflies. I slapped his hand. (laughs) You do get a couple of them in. I flip more pages. I'm just going to ignore what's going on over there. Um, I'm going to quickly flip through the pages to see if like there's anything that stands out. Like Maybe an invisible kind of ink. (laughs) I'm just going to like... Well, it's invisible, so it's not prominent. That might be lit up by fireflies. fireflies. Oh, you do have the you got the fireflies yeah, uh-huh. going. Um, you see a little uh, 
sheet of paper kind of wedged into a, the book. I thumb through, I get to that page, I open it up, and I see how it's wedged in. Is it like kind of a bookmark? What's that? Is it like a bookmark? Yeah. Yep. How did I miss that? And I pull that sheet of paper out. Is it folded up? Yep. I'll unfold it. And you hold the fireflies up, but it's pretty bright in here. I'm it's looking. it's about midday now, so. All right. Well, I'll get some hood shelter. Maybe use myself to put. Shadows. Oh, there's there's like, wings. curtains, right? Yeah, there's definitely curtains. So I summon Jeffrey under the curtain rod, and I say, Jeffrey, pull the shades. All right, Jeffrey, <laughs> flaps on. <laughs> It's like mood lighting. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> Good job, fella. <laughs> Pulls the shade. And it gets pretty dark. These are heavy curtains. And you see the f- fireflies. Um, they're still in a, a jar, right? And uh, <laughs> if you're looking at Oreb and he smiles, you can see bits of the fluorescent <laughs> juice <laughs> all over his mouth over from his snacking yeah, up right. <laughs> some snacking on these flies i'm sure nox has kind of a grimace if he sees that <laughs> if i can before nox looks i press digitate his face so it's clean it's like Whoop. i probably end up getting extra because i figure some of them are going to be lost sure yeah exactly they're fireflies. yeah they're abundant they probably don't live that long they're abundant <laughs> in fact you probably can catch them a lot of them on a nice summer's night, right? So Too you bad have stock spring, piles. right? But it is spring, right? Correct. Um, so I'll look at it again with a little more shade. Okay, so I'm it's... gonna look at the original decoder as well. I want to know if that yep. has anything. So you put it. the two pieces of paper together. I'm gonna and... put them, maybe overlap them too. That will do something. That doesn't really do anything. Okay. No. Nope, no. Nope. But you do see on this sheet of paper in the invisible ink um, all these different symbols mixed up. Symbols do match the the sheet of paper that you heisted from the crazy guy in the library. And you would have to put them together. Do it. Or I try. Um, and do they have... It's, is it an actual decoder or is it literally the, there's no way to know what's what? No, nope, it's an actual decor. Okay. It's it's pretty straightforward. Okay. So I'll start working the process of each different symbol, what they mean, sure. or what letter they represent. Sure. Or and as you do, it takes you, I'm going to say just because it's tedious, mm-hmm. it takes you about 45 minutes to uh, get through. And it's just, uh, it seems like a bunch of directions. Like so, north, west, south, east, or latitude, longitude? No, it's... Or go do this thing. It's, it's, uh, it says, um, uh, 35 miles north of, uh, Emmerich Heights. Okay. Take a, uh... Go east or go west on the dusty trail. Go west. Okay. Thirty miles. <laughs> west. <laughs> Which one is that? <laughs> Thirty miles into the blazing caverns. Have I ever heard of blazing caverns? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can I roll a history on it if I even have a direct, like, idea of where it might be? Again, these are kind of like fabled tales and stuff like that. So they're kind of like, this place might exist. So Blazing Caverns isn't actually a documented map. No, no. Where have I heard that term from? Just in tales, like childhood tales. Right? Like the fables of the seers and stuff like that. You're like... You kind of see the blazing caverns, and you're like, it's strange. But you're hashing it out. And, and it says, um, uh, just 
beware the truth. Is that all of the coding? Yeah. So Cross it doesn't give you a specific spot in the Blazing Camber Caverns, but it, that's where you need to go. It, okay, that's where that direction's at. Caverns. Right. Well, I did figure it out. Everyone's probably, I don't know, bored out of their mind now. <laughs> no more what are, fireflies. Are what's left. Orb doing? <laughs> I've been sneaking fireflies into Chance's money pouch. Oh, nice. Well, I guess roll your yeah. sleight of hand against our reception. Yep. Oh, that's not great. Maybe not. Uh, for not seven, twelve, only thirteen. Oh, I got a 14. There you go. So I notice. So instead of saying anything, I'm just going to slide a hand him back to where he's getting them from the whole time. <laughs> There's so, he's so putting many my here. Pouch and I'm just putting them back. <laughs> it's like a constant passing yep. back. It's and like, forth. I'm like, meh, whoop, meh, whoop. So I probably not to be the same firefly just making the rounds. <laughs> <laughs> and just as you're finishing decoding everything and you tell them that you have finished, a customer walks in. All right, hello. Oh, Jeffrey, get the shades. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, no, we weren't doing anything. Hi. <laughs> it's just a young man. Uh, yeah, it, it's, I am looking to give my mother a present. Um, Got just the thing right here, young man. Come on over. I'll show you exactly what you're looking for. All right. Okay. I just take over. <laughs> <laughs> I look for the most expensive. You know what? I'll take care of this. I have a woman's touch. You go do your own. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I better go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's fine. <laughs> no. So I'm going to take him over to a different part of the shop. Hopefully out of sight of at least him. Right. Um, it's uh, it's my mother's birthday. I have just the thing for you. Oh, I know what's going to happen. And I pull <laughs> off the bracelet. <laughs> this is a beautiful silver bracelet. And I bet your mother would love it. I... I don't want to brace it. I'm at, take it. I'm at a lamp Fine. shop <laughs> for my mother's Obviously, birthday. I don't have the sick. right touch. All right. Well, I got this then. Yeah, come on over here, lad. I got something just for you. Look at this. This is a beautiful He gilded. looks at Knox. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think you're the owner of the shop, though, yes, aren't you? Yes, I am. Oh, yeah. What can I help you with? I'm just looking for a lamp. Oh, I pull out one of the cheaper <laughs> ones. I think so this is... Good for your price range, yes. Um, yeah, but I don't like turtle shells. Oh, okay. Yeah, the turtles weren't the only things tortured in the making of these lanterns. <laughs> and it's a nice, like, <laughs> I'm behind the kid and I'm like, it's a, it's a nice, like, seashell <laughs> lamp she that shell. you hand them. Seashell she lamp shell that you by hand the them. And I was <laughs> like, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going to be celebrating my mom's birthday tonight. It's going to be yeah. quite the night. Well, my friend here hey, has a birthday yeah, today, too. That's why I got that fine bracelet. Is that your mom? <laughs> and no. My mom's much <laughs> Dummy. older than uh, this uh, young lady who offered me a bracelet. And I... what was that about? I don't understand. <laughs> I didn't want to tell you that I have a little allergy to silver. Well, that is, sorry. If that I is one I copper. Give you that. Here, that let is... me take it back. I'm very sorry. No, and it's I fine. hand back the bracelet. You can obviously see the rash. That's There's on a rash. That arm. Like, no worries. I will. I will find something else for you. Don't you worry, dear. You don't have to find me anything. You guys have given me the best birthday ever. Uh, we have. And I'm together, you've given me the best birthday I'm like, that's ever. I was just about to tell you that I might have found directions. I'll be one copper, please. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I tossed the yeah, cap around yeah. and thing. You're good, kid. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> you love paint for everybody, dude. <laughs> That's awesome. a high roller, baby. How are you All making right. any money in this place? Just a copper for that? Wow. Anyways. <laughs> You're good, kid. Get lost. All right. Thank you. And he leaves and goes. <laughs> Have a steps. good day. I'm going to lock the door <laughs> so no one else comes in and interrupts. Yep, yep. You never you told me you had kids. I'll just make Jeffrey do it. I have younger brothers, but no kids. I have a passive uh, perception of 16, so... All right, Jeffrey, Hopefully you like seashell lanterns. <laughs> I'll distract you and help him. Can I help you Jeffrey? Buy me one? <laughs> no, your uh, son just bought one. If Jeffrey can help, give me the help action. Can I give him the help action? Yeah. 
Okay. I'm going to have Jeffrey close the lock, and he's going to try to be slippery about it. He's bad at that, though. What lock are you closing? I'm making Jeffrey climb down the wall to lock the door. How are you locked it? Well, he's watching you. Yeah, I've had passed a perception of 16. So. I wasn't trying to hide it. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. I'd like to stay open. Yes, but first... <laughs> like, I just found directions to what can possibly be some sort of map to... Directions to a map? Well, let me put it in a better way. I found directions to what can possibly hold some kind of fabled treasure or something. <gasps> Bam, dollar signs. Mm. Well then. So it's not technically a map, like no, but it is directions to a mm. place. And I've if heard we that. If we could put it on a map, maybe we could see exactly where we need to go. I've now. heard adventures are a woman's best friend, and we should just go right out there right now and see what we can do. I don't think do I've ever heard that. To, uh, <laughs> I have all the time. Uh, I repeat it. Adventures are a woman's best a friend. <laughs> see? There you go. <laughs> you repeat it in my voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why don't we go find some of that treasure? Well, that's where I mix them and match. Why don't we go find a woman's best friend? <laughs> <Nice>. Auto tuned. <laughs> <laughs> the transition from one voice to the next just threw me off. I was like, um, well, I wasn't saying we should walk out the door now, but maybe we should get a map. You can't walk out the door now because it's locked. <laughs> do you have? Do you happen to stay have a, a while and listen? What of yeah, Emmerich Heights in the surrounding area? What about the area? You wouldn't have a map on it. Oh, I oh, I know a place that has all sorts of information. The Knowledge Nook. And actually, <laughs> you do know that you do have quite a bit of like maps and. And stuff at well, the knowledge. I know nook. they're there. I just didn't want to go back because I work there. And honestly, oh, I'll go. We were kind of kicked out. <laughs> you were kicked out. But Whoa, you were with y- me. Got just out? go home. <laughs> That's what he said. Why don't I go back and talk to your boss, John, and I'll see if there's any way that I could finagle some sort of map out of him. Yes, and unlock the door on your way out. He has to. Oh, I guess he don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to, but I will if you want to. I've seen him use the window a couple times. Oh, that was just going back into his apartment. I have no idea what he was doing. Anyways. (laughs) I'm going to get that map. (laughs) (laughs) So you do. You go down. It doesn't take you too much longer. And um, he is kind of grumpy at you. (laughs) I'll try to charm him. It doesn't take much. He's, okay. I mean, he's just... Easily seducible. Yeah, he's just like, whatever. This is kind of how Celeste is. Like, sure. Little flighty. You know, he understands that she, she hangs around these crazy people. But he's he has wells. a heart for her. I mean, she's <laughs> hanging around them today. Yeah. He, he that's has mostly a, just for their benefit. <laughs> he has a what for her? A heart. Like, on. A heart. A heart. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's got a heart on. Okay. Yeah, so I borrow the map and I go back. Sure. Mm. You found the cake then, huh? Where was the cake? On Probably the map on shelf. shelf. <laughs> I leave it. <laughs> no one wants it. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Sure. He probably put fireflies in. It's full of fish slugs. tails and fireflies. Yes. That is protein. There you go. Yes, that's a yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> when I got to the first wing, I was like, "All right, no. I'm done." <laughs> okay, yeah. So I bring that back. All right. How else so do the... you make the icing? Without eyes, <laughs> icing. All right, folks, I got it. Come in with the map. Spread it out on the counter. Push some stuff out of the way. <laughs> so the directions say that we need to go 35 miles north of Emmerich Heights. And if we're here, and this map is at least somewhat accurate, most maps aren't, <laughs> then that would put us right about here. And I point to where I think 35 miles north. Yeah, and it's a mountainous area. Well, or so not like out. mountainous, but there's a few. Tall. Well, and then... See, here's the good part. If we have a map, we can cut out a lot of those directions, possibly. 30 miles west of there would put us right about here. Well, why don't we just follow the directions? 
if we cut out a part of the direction, just go straight there. If you don't follow the correct path, you might not reach to your destination. Oh, and it said something else Last about the beware of the truth. Whoa, hold on a second. There's a beware. I mean, every fabled treasure comes with a beware, doesn't it? I don't know. I've never come across all a fabled treasure before. All the stories have it that way. Oh, all right. Well, I guess. I mean, it's know. probably nothing more than a fairy tale. Oh, okay. Well, let's go find out. But again. why would that old geezer have. Sorry, I didn't mean it. Why would that old gentleman have a map like or directions to a place? He wants the treasure. I'm surprised he didn't come back. Well, you think he would have looked anymore. at it? <laughs> <laughs> May have he was trying to get someplace safe before he cracked the code, and unfortunately for him, that won't be happening today. Maybe. Yeah. It might be a good idea for us to skip town for the afternoon, go look for this treasure ourselves, and not be here when he comes looking. I don't feel like we need to skip town. Why'd you jump to that conclusion? Well, that's how. That's what I always do. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's good just to not be around for a couple of afternoons. You have two days off. You do. <laughs> it's perfect timing. That's, that's a long journey. We don't even have horses. No, but we have fireflies. Well, fireflies won't get us there faster. But they'd at least light the way a little. It'll take a lot longer than two days. To get there? To get there. 30 miles and 35? I could even cover that. Everyone can cover that, but not in two days. Sure could. On foot? Oh. Mm -hmm. No? We don't have the average do. person if you go fast walks at four miles an hour. On normal terrain on concrete. This is That's going why to you the take mountains. the path. Look at mountain range. You think you can traverse right, that? Well, I guess we're going to need some horses, but I don't have those kinds of fun, dear. Mm -hmm. I don't know. How much is a horse? I think they're around like 50 gold. Yep, 50 mm -hmm. gold. Well, it looks like we'll have to raise some money tonight. <laughs> it is It is her birthday. Yeah, why don't we go? I'm not going to sell myself <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what I'm talking about. Dear um, Unholy Avernus, how did you think of that? I was just talking about some from the car games of Mazoko. You did you you do know that the drunken monkey has a big Mazoko tournament tonight. Well, and it is Celeste's birthday. Well, I tell you what. Here we go. Uh if you guys want to lend me some money, I'm sure I could double it easy. There's a big Mazoko tournament tonight at the Drunken Monkey and uh we can make this work. We can have horses by tomorrow morning. I'll hold up the copper you gave me for the <laughs> lamb. That's about all you're willing to pony up. Mr. Knox, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. Are you sure you can even win it? I'm sure. Like, how sure are you? I mean, do I know who else is playing? Are there big names there? Big rollers, or you don't know definitely if they're going to be there, but you kind of assume. Does he have a nemesis? Someone that's better at Mazoko? Not better at Mazoko, but his dad killed my dad because I beat him. Hmm. He's the one that bet the book. That'd be Frankie, the fish's kid. Frankie, the fish's kid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he might be there. You kind of suspect that he's going <laughs> to be there. Frankie, mm -hmm. the fish's kid. What's his name? Frankie. Frankie. Yeah, he's Frankie, comma the, the fish's, fish's kid. kid. The fish is like. Um, you know, he's like some kind of underworld ringleader, and Frankie is his kid who's cocky and shitty and not great at Mazoko, but everybody sure. always lets him win, because right. if right. you win, then he kills your dad, right. evidently. You're also you're also uh, kind of worried that uh, the guy known as El Presidente is going to be there. Mm. He just calls himself, the, you know, like El but Presidente, he's good. but he's really good. Yeah, I'm sure I could win. That's my flaw. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> give me your money, I'll double it. Yeah, right. All right, I might be able to add to your funds a little. All right, let's do this. Or I don't even know how much money you know. we started with. 
Yeah. Uh, it's just standard. Like, 10 or 15. 15. I started with 10. 10. I started with 15 coming in, but then I doubled it. So now I have like 28 left, I think. I've got 15 in here. Nice. Some people start with more. So yeah. it depends on your background, I think, or your class, one of the two. Um, They have 25 right now. Hmm. My rent money. And I give you 10 gold. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. I try to say it quiet, but I didn't say it quiet enough for his passive perception of sixteen. So, mm-hmm. how much would rent be? Probably like, it wouldn't be ten gold. gold. No, no it definitely would be a stunning not. amount of money for. Yeah, it'd rent. be like a silver or something like that a night, maybe less than but that. That's all my money. <laughs> thirty silver. Let's say thirty. Silvers. Thirty pieces of silver for a month, sure, or three gold. I mean, you still got that bracelet. That's true. My gift to you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, darling. Mm-hmm. All right, what do you say, guys? Well, let's, let's get some horses. While you're getting yours handed, I say, here, I'm in too for 10 gold, and I hand you nine. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> it's like a two. 11. 11? I mean, that's my passive. <laughs> it's 18. <clears throat> I don't think you're the best counter in the world, or but it's okay. I won't hold it against you. You got one more on you, or no? That was only no. nine. Ah. Oh, here's one. And I pull it out from behind your ear. <laughs> <laughs> you say it in his voice? It's in my voice. Yeah. <laughs> Look what's over here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. What you got over here? <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, okay, so that's ten from you. Ouch. <laughs> Mr. Knox, <laughs> this is such a bad idea. <laughs> You said you double, correct? Aye. How much are horses and how much it. do you have? Well, a horse is about 50 gold, give or take, and I have 45 right now. So I figure if you can cover 10 more gold, that gives us enough money to, you know, look the part. And uh, if I can double the 50, then we could get two horses and ride double each of us. And then whatever we have when we get a hold of this treasure, we'll cut it four ways. That way everybody's getting a good return on their money. What do you say? It sounds like a deal, don't it? It sounds like with five gold, you could double it and get to two. Well, well but then we can't. With ten gold, you could also buy rations. You could buy things you're going to need on the journey. There's a lot of things you got to. I got to Like lanterns. Right well, and... I'm going to be in my room. Okay, so you disappear to your room. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go pack. Okay, well, oh. all right. You, you can actually make a lot more, get a lot more things on the road. Pick up scavenge things while you travel. So here's the thing, Mr. Knox. While you're at one of these games, people are throwing around drinks, buying expensive doodads, and looking the part, which is important. When you're uh, playing games of chance, you have to look like you fit in, and it won't take a little bit extra funding. That's why I'm asking for ten, not five, sir. Trust me. This is what I do. You're going to lose all I know money. this is what you do. <laughs> oh, every last red cent. <laughs> <laughs> I will do five, and you can give me ten back if you win, right? Uh, no, sir. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase your money a much, much larger percentage than double. What I'm going to do is I propose to double the money tonight, buy horses with it, the four of us ride off and find this treasure, and we'll split the treasure four ways. And, sir, I am absolutely confident that any treasure that needs a code to get to has more than ten gold with your name on it waiting in it. Trust me. Everything will be fine. I think five gold will do fine. <laughs> okay, him. I get five gold out of him. That's fine. I'll make it work. You just have to get a better price on the horses. No shit. Yeah, let's talk <laughs> the horse guy down. Okay, so I got the 50 gold I need to go gamble. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. So I've got everything packed. I'm not going to take it to the bar with me, but I'm going to take my sword, my crossbow, sure. my sure. armor. I come out completely different. Fully armored, fully equipped. Whoa there, darling. You're uh, looking pretty ready to go. I'm ready for uh, going to the bar at least. That's a good line to remember. <laughs> <laughs> you just write all these one-liners down. That'd yeah. be great. Whoa, out of there, darling. You're looking pretty ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go meet someone at the bar. <laughs> oh, no. Mm. All right. Let's go, gang. You coming, Mr. Knox? I'm sure we play the show. Sure, I will attend. All right, we're going to the Drunken Monkey. All oh, right. See, see. So we wait some time because it was kind of midday, and we're going to go to the Drunken Monkey. They usually open at 5, 
and the the tourney starts at six. Cool. And so we get there. Maybe it's about five thirty, just enough to time for you to buy in with all fifty. I said? want to run some investigation. What does it cost to buy in? Um, is there how much you got? I have. That's 50. how much it is. Okay. And is it every single? I can't buy in for forty or forty-five or. Nope, it's fifty. That's a fifty-dollar buy-in. Okay, fifty gold. That's a fucking pricey tournament, man. This is <laughs> this is high stakes. I use high stakes. I'll yeah. use vigilant blessing on uh, Josh's character. You have an nice. advantage on initiative. Sweet. <laughs> when it goes south, and I got to pull heat on people, mm-hmm. <laughs> my advantage. When, on when we're going in, I do a real casual. To the the bouncer. <laughs> I just see him. <laughs> so how old are you again? Eleven. Oh shit! <laughs> but Kenku are full grown at like whatever. Yeah. Right. You know, we right. age it a so different way. Look like it. <laughs> he doesn't notice. Yeah, he, he thinks yeah. you're. He thinks you're old enough. Like it's a drunken monkey. It's a trash bar, man. It's 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 scummy. It's pretty scummy. But it's a bar. lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Right. It's a lot of fun. Like. First thing I walk in, I'm like, oh, this place assaults your senses pretty hard. Yeah, it smells like, it's one of those places that smells like yesterday's beer. Just mm-hmm. To me, I'm like, floor. smells like home. I don't know what you're talking about. I go Not up to the bar, and again. I spot some gum on the bottom. And I'm like, do the colors smell different to you? <laughs> <laughs> this big, uh, big, fat, uh, greasy-looking bartender. Everybody knows Chuck. Whoa there, darling. You're looking ready to go. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So I think based on our feelings, I probably have a good idea of what you would need for gambling, right? Is that dexterity, intelligence, charisma? I figure that charisma to fib to bluff, and yeah, and then maybe de- dex and sleight of hand if I'm cheating and dealing off the bottom or something. Right, and then we'll just roll some d twenties, maybe. Okay, to and see if my you feature. Win and I'm not really sure how to pay this mazoku. Is there is there an actual game? There's not okay. an actual. You can just make it a challenge roll. Yeah, it's a challenge roll. Yeah, because um, so, my my background trait says. Where is it? Under features and traits, then just do. I think it is. No, it's under description. Odds and probability are your bread and butter. During downtime activities that involve games of chance or figuring odds in the best plan, you can get a solid sense of which choice is likely the best one and which opportunities seem too good to be true. I don't know if that'll help me. But it's called Never Tell Me the Odds. It's the gambler feature. Okay. I also have Enhance Ability I plan on doing. It's a concentration for an hour. So an hour before your game starts, I can give you advantage on either Dex, Charisma, Wisdom, Intelligence, whichever one you want. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. So I guess it's up to you as the storyteller, but is it more like would I be... Does Chance think he would be better served by sleight of hand and dealing in a way that's fucked up? Or I'll even pull cards out of my sleeve and flip them out and put them in my hand if I get the opportunity. Um, like I'll hold the card from one hand and pop sure. it into the next hand. Sure. Uh, or would I be better served by bluffing and lying with charisma? Because mm. I know that Chance knows the game really well. Mm-hmm. But it's like a pretend game. So you get to figure out how this game works. Is it more like bluffing and lying? Or is it more like sleight Look, of hand, card pocketing? I think and... it's card pocketing and sleight of hand. Okay, so okay. you'll get Cat's Grace. You have advantage on dexterity checks. It also doesn't, you don't take damage from falls under 20 feet or less. That's good if I dive out the window. <laughs> is <laughs> yeah, it on the right. second story? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's kind of played almost like Texas Hold. Okay. Okay, so there's going to be 12 cards in the middle. Mm-hmm. The first one flips, second one flips. And so on. Sure. Right? And at the end of each row, so there's 12 cards. Uh, it's um, a row of three. There's four rows of three. And on the last... On the last flip. Flip. The turn or whatever. Is, or, yeah. The river? Yep. The river. Uh, the river is how 
is that's the end of that bet and then it goes so there's four rounds got it right and at the end of the fourth round is okay. is um so you the, bet in the blind you bet in the flop you bet in the turn you bet in the river right cool is there right. placement money like even third second or first i uh, no it's he winner, spent all his gold winner takes all it's winner takes all I stakes winner takes all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so I spent my ten gold poorly. <laughs> so there's gonna be what? There's gonna be wish you were a bard. There's gonna be <laughs> there's gonna be two rounds. Gotcha. Right. Um, Is it single elimination? Uh, after each row, a guy goes. Okay. Right. Whoever. There's no losers bracket though. No. Gotcha. Yeah. After okay. Each round. And if it, you're out, you're out, right? Everybody gets the bet, but they don't have to put all in. Or are people betting like on us while we're playing? Is there like a side bet game no. where there's people in the crowd that are like, you got 10 bucks Maybe, on but it's, it wouldn't be anything that you would... Not official. It's not official, for sure. Okay. Right? Well, there might be two guys, two friends. What I'm wondering is, there are a way to hedge our bets by putting like maybe the extra five gold on me dropping out in the first round or me making it to the third round or can I throw yeah, it and but still you're make some not money gonna, back? If you're putting all your money in, you might be able to make like these these guys are schmucks. They, they, you might be able to make like 30 extra work. silver or something like that on it. All right, fuck it then. I'm all in. Right. I'm not losing anyways. Right. So, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, that's the, the way he thinks. So there's going to be there's going to be uh, two games that you have to play. There's two tables set up already. Okay. Right? And then the winners of the two tables, so there'll be two people, the last two standing, and then from one table and the last two standing from another table, Mm -hmm. five people at each table, ten people in this turn. Okay. All right. So, where were we? Never tell him the odds, Matt. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know how this is going to work. This is on the... (laughs) So, usually challenges are like you roll, like, either three times and... Grab the best two of those. Yep. Or you might roll against somebody a bunch of times. There might be like an extended challenge against another person. Or sometimes the target number differs depending on what you're trying to do. So if it's a dexterity game and I'm trying to bluff my way through, it would Mm -hmm. be a higher difficulty. If it's a bluffing game but I'm trying to like do the card hide and pop in new cards into my hand, sure, that might be a higher difficulty. It depends. Right. So I don't know. I would probably run either contested rolls or I would have a difficulty that someone has to hit and make them roll like five times and see how many times you fail or succeed. How about like this? We have five people at the table. Sure. I got four dice. Okay. You got one. I had two because I have advantage. Yep. You get advantage because you're... Cat's Grace. And it's a dexterity mm-hmm. related. So... Oh, fucking luck. All right. <laughs> And so is it just one roll? Or are we going to roll a couple times? We'll roll three times. Okay. So this is the first round. Yep. Anybody in this first round that gets lower than you is out. Okay. We'll just do it that way. Okay. And if you, let's say if you beat everybody. Is there any way to give him better odds by. Cat's Grace. Um, getting some of these other guys maybe a little drunk? Yep. There is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Nice. So we're walking in the bar. Orb goes up to the, the bartender and says, he looks like you're ready to go. Oh, there, darling. smell different to you. <laughs> you're looking ready to go. Yeah, <laughs> you're looking ready yeah. to go. Did these colors smell different? That situation. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember his name. It was Chuck. Yeah. Chuck. Chuck. Big Good bad. luck, Chuck. He's got the apron on. <laughs> he's balding, but he's got that comb over that's like the greasy kitchen look but mm-hmm. he's not in a kitchen he's behind the bar he's got uh he's the guy that wipes your glasses he got you all the types dirtier. of the <laughs> cheap alcohol you can ask for they got a little tap for the, the the beer there's a bunch of scruffy looking people and uh oh yeah uh yeah uh what do you what do you need what are the what the fuck are you talking about these colors for uh I need 11 drinks, please. You need 11 drinks. Can you even afford 11 drinks, sir? I can probably afford 11 drinks. Unless you surprise me with very expensive drinks. All right. Well, I don't turn on any money now. What kind of drinks do you want? Um, Can I get one of each color? One? What? <laughs> what the fuck? Did, 
like, he was just like, I don't even get that. You, Do you want my gold or have not? You, have you ever been to a bar before? <laughs> Do you want my gold? <laughs> I'm not going to take the time to make you a <laughs> color of every single drink. <laughs> How much gold do you push I have out? five gold left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, it's going to take the time now. <laughs> yep. Yes, you will. I suppose it's going to probably cost you one gold here. And he w- gives you a wink, but he takes the other four pieces. I consider that a tip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, darling. You look ready to go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he takes like 15 minutes to concoct you. Uh, all the colors of the rainbow for 11 drinks. Uh, he does really poorly at it. Uh-huh. He rolled a natural one. Oh. Um, it's like water and piss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what the yellow one is. Right. Yeah. Do these colors taste different to you? <laughs> <laughs> Just back off, kid. <laughs> I consider that a tip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, he, he looks at the bouncer and he just goes, uh, and he turns around and he starts helping. <laughs> roll a dexterity. <laughs> oh no! Mm. Oh, oh no! no! What did you roll? Die. It says two on the die, so it probably oh, doesn't no. matter. <laughs> Is it not a one? Abilities. Luckily, I have a plus a four on the countertop. <laughs> So that would be a six. Yeah. Six. So <laughs> six of them drop. Yeah. Yeah. So I pick up five of them and I push the other six over <laughs> to his side. <laughs> they go crashing everywhere. Chuck quickly turns around. What are you doing here? What is going on? You're already- The colors are all wrong. And I leave. <laughs> <laughs> I only need five colors. Roy yeah. G. Biz. Oh, oh he, he, he's going to let it slide. Because you tipped him four gold. That's you tipped him four gold. <laughs> but he definitely like looks at the bouncer and says, so you're cut off for the rest of the night. Okay. That's He's out of money, all, too. That's all you get. <laughs> yeah. Five I have, beers. I have, I, have, yeah. I have five vodka infusions. <laughs> In walks Tommy Two Fish, or whatever his name is. Leave me Frankie. What's his name? Frankie. Frankie the fish. Frankie. Well, yeah. he's the fish's kid, but his name is Frankie. Frankie. Frankie goes and sits down at the opposite table. You I are sat down hate Frankie. with El Presidente and a couple other gentlemen that want to try their luck tonight. Sure. And I'm like, Mr. President? Oh, uh, yeah, chance. Yeah. Good to see you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I suspect... Uh, Expect it's going to be you and me tonight going to the champion table. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I would be honored to play yeah. against you in the final round. Yeah. I don't know if I was expecting uh, your friend to be showing up tonight. I look over the fish and I look back at the president. He's the staring right kid. at the fish. Frankie. Staring, yep. yeah, staring right at you. So I look over at Frankie and I'm like, I give him kind of a squint eye. And I look back. You can see... Two of his, his thugs. friends yeah. come up, and they're, they're standing right behind him, and they're getting, oh, you can do this, Frankie. I can't wait. It's going to be a good night tonight. And Frankie's just staring right at you. And let's go back. What's your thing with Frankie again, just for everybody's knowledge? So I beat him at the game of cards that I won the book in. Right. But uh, I was trying to throw the game, and I still kept winning hands anyways, strangely. Right. Um, and then when I finally got the tome, I found out, I ran home to tell my dad we had to leave right. for a couple of days and my father was already dead because, uh, the fish's goons got there before I did, sure. before that last hand was even dealt and asked my dad as a message. And that's why Frankie wins a lot. Cause no one wants to beat him. Right. Not cause he's any good. Right. Right. Yeah. So I hate this dude. Yep. Yeah, the guy that killed your dad, you should probably hate that guy. Yeah, him and his dad and their friends. <laughs> That's the, why I sold my soul. One of the goons hands him a shot, takes it back, and just gives you one of those. He's like the spoiled mobster's kid in the tracksuit that yep. has a big mouth and everybody yes. hates, but no one can do anything to because he's the mobster's kid. Yep. He's that guy. Yep. He's got rings on every finger. He's got chains yep. all over the place. Right. 
that he picked up from the shiny treasures store. <laughs> they all have an engraving of shiny yeah, treasures shiny right treasures. on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Celeste, what are you doing? Um, you standing behind him? You know, I think I'm going to not try to get away. That's really not my forte. She was thinking about it. Maybe trying to. You got that woman's help touch, the right? Odds, but then she knows that she's just terrible. She's awful at romance or anything seduction wise. Mm-hmm. She's going to stand there and make sure no one fucks with him. I think I got hired muscle myself, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I have everything equipped all my armor, all my sword. Well, not swords, I only have one sword. For now, a crossbow. Pretty hardcore birthday for you, huh? <laughs> happy birthday, mother. <laughs> <Bravo's>. <laughs> like, happy birthday to me. <laughs> yes, yes, queen. <laughs> but for the most part, I'm going to kick back at the table, prop my feet up on the table, and start reading a book. Right. And you know what? It's not a bad idea that you're all in your garden because this place is rough. So you kind of expect it. Just in case everything goes, you know, like there's fights tonight. Hey. I equip my shield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And all right. I mean, why not? And Aura, what are you doing right now? I'm bringing over drinks for the table. Oh, great. And hey, guys, I brought drinks for the... Whoops! And did you drop one? I drop all of them. Oh, you Frankie. drop all of them. On Frankie. <laughs> 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 What are you? What are you doing, kid? What are you? Why you tripped me? Oh, <laughs> I got to point up at the muscle. <laughs> he stands up. He goes, "Are you? Do you know who I am? <laughs> You're all wet." <laughs> okay, I put my hand over towards the the pack rod. I'm getting ready to draw heat here. His his thugs like stand <clears throat> right. So you're face to face with him. His thugs circle you. I'm going to cast calm emotion. There you go. Oh my god. <laughs> and that's this, how I mean, you do this it, was going to get fucked real quick. Yep. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, what game was so go? All right. Can you read Calm Emotion to yep. me? You attempt to suppress strong emotions in a group of people. Each humanoid within a 20 foot radius sphere centered on a point you choose within range must make a charisma saving throw. Wow. A creature can choose to fail this saving throw if wishes. Wait. If it wishes mm-hmm. yeah. oh so okay can choose. Can choose to fail. okay it can be like right. i would rather be calmer thanks uh a creature fails at saving throw choose one of the two following effects you can suppress any effect causing a target to be charmed or frightened when the spell ends any suppressed effects resumes provided that its duration has not expired in the meantime alternatively you can make a uh, target indifferent about a creature of your choice that it's hostile towards the indifference ends if the target is attacked or harmed by a spell that if or if it witnesses any of its friends being harmed, when the spell ends, creature becomes hostile again, unless the M rules otherwise. Look at me. I will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you cast the spell. What do mm-hmm. they have to say? There's three of them. Uh, it's a 14 so. DC charisma save. Is it one target or multiple targets? Uh, like one target. Each I humanoid a... in 20 foot radius. Yeah, oh, so it's B2. targets. All right, so these are his two thugs. And it's a wisdom. What's the charisma? Uh, charisma save. Charisma? Uh, what's the DC? 14. 14. I barely made it. I'm calm. <laughs> These two? <clears throat> two thugs make it. Oh, man. Okay, so the what thugs Frankie? make it, but Frankie? But Frankie makes it. Makes it. Mm. <laughs> so I relax. Yep. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I, and so I put my, my wings up and say, whoa there, darling, you're looking ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Go. What the fuck did you just say to me? Hey, Frankie. <laughs> hey, is this your friend? Yeah, he's with me. Save it for the table. You see what he did to me? Save it for the table. Are you kidding Do me? Do you know who I am? This is insults me. <laughs> this insults me and your little punk, and we're going to take you and show you what we do with little punks like you out and back. I consider that a tip. <laughs> okay. So I look at El Presente. I'm like, I'm sorry. I might not make the game. Actually, maybe you can save it for after the game. Uh, who are you saying that to? I'll say it directly to Frankie. Well, what's that supposed to mean? That means if you want to bring it, bring it after the game. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, we need all your gold first. I'm going to take your money tonight. 
and then I'm going to kick your ass. I'm going to kick his ass. I'm going to kick his ass. And whatever that little fucking thing over there is doing. He's waving his hands around. Excuse me, I'm a woman. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> Good for me, sweetheart. Mm. He sits down. He's like, <laughs> going to be a fun night. And uh, his thugs kind of leave or out of it for right now. But they're... They're... They're heightened. Everybody's heightened right now. So are we going to start this game or what? So their game starts. Okay. Their game starts. All right. So there. I sit back down. Sorry about that, sir. My apologies. And the dealer's out there and he goes, no worries. Kind of expect this shithole. This shit to happen in this shithole. Sure. Uh, <laughs> but let's continue. All right. Let's continue. Zoko, you guys all know the rules, and he lays it down the twelve cards. And you know, now I think about it. Three. Problem emotions is concentration. Oh. So you don't have enhanced ability anymore. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I know who to blame. <laughs> There's no money later. Here's the uh, great you. thing about being a new DM at the table with Alex. Yeah, I don't have to worry about that. No mm-hmm. shit. Right. right. I could have not said anything. All right, let's go. That's not my style. <laughs> Appreciate it. You could it. recast it. Okay, so how... Uh, I don't have another second level. How are we doing so. this, Josh? How do you want to oh, suggest yeah. doing this? I got four four players here, mm-hmm. and you got one... One whole die. There's going to be four... Challenges? Four challenges. Okay. You have to survive to the last round. Okay. But since you're doing sleight of hand, roll your sleight of hand right now. Okay. I mean, that's what I figured I was doing the whole time with sleight of hand rolls. Okay. Oh, that's right. what I'm doing. Okay. I'm just cheating. Sure, sure. The whole time. Yeah. And the whole time? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. God, you're going to get caught? You're gonna get your ass kicked. Yeah. Just like he said. Uh, yellow is El Presidente. Okay. Sure. Okay. All right, here we go. Fuck. 12. This guy's out. We'll just go Goon. lowest roll is out. Yellow okay. is El Presidente. Black is and Frankie. what was uh, you rolled a twelve? Yeah. Okay, so you actually just came in second in that hand. Okay, but you're still in it. Cool. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. You win that hand. I look over I'm like, do you understand what the hell is going on here? I'm gonna kick his ass, and I'm gonna kick his ass, <laughs> and I'm gonna kick his ass. I look over right. at Frankie. Does he hear? Oh, right. <laughs> we'll see if he goes. Here we go. Ooh, 24. 24 is good to go. I'm actually mm-hmm. pretty good at this. You won your hand. Okay. You're cheating. Yes, I am. I mean, <laughs> I'm good at cheating. That's El, what I do. And El Presidente. <laughs> it's you, El Presidente. Okay. And he looks at you. He goes, ah, yeah. But knock that shit off at the next table. And he calls you out, like, right in front of the dealer. I'm sure I do not know what you're talking about, sir. Wink, wink. <laughs> yep. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> the dealer kind of catches on. You go, oh. like, what are you talking about? El Presidente just gives you a wink, and then he looks at the dealer and gives a wink. And he, dealer knows what's... He missed something there. So can I switch sleight of hand to bluffing? Sure. You're going to okay. have to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll switch to bluffing as my main tactic for this one. Okay. So over at the other table, another schmuck... And another poor schmuck and Freddy the fish won. So now he sits down at the table. All right, Chance. All right, you ready to get your ass kicked here and then your ass kicked later? You could have fooled me, sweetheart. How's your dad? Oh, (laughs) no. So it's going to be a fun night. Okay. So I uh, I summon Jeff under the table. And I tell him mentally to be ready. Okay. You hear a little plop. <laughs> you know, basically, splat. <laughs> I don't yeah. think they have much still. They do. Really? Yeah, sneaky. they've got plus four, which for is pretty sight? good for an octopus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they have chromatophores. Yeah, but... Slapping around on the ground. No, he's slow, man. He's quiet. He's like a ninja. He's an octopus ninja. <laughs> he looks. Be- he kind of looks over his shoulder. Hey, Biggie. You hear what happened to his father? Before the end of the night, 
First, I'm going to take your money. Then we're going to go out back, and I'm going to push your teeth up the back of your fucking head. Gonna and then try. I'm going to go find your father. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big guy now, huh? Big guy. What the fuck is going on, I say? I know you cheated. I know you cheated in that game. No one beats Freddy the fish. Play like shit, Freddy. People are just scared of your dad. That's what's going on. You've been spending your whole life thinking that you're good at something you're absolutely fucking garbage at. He stands up and he throws his drink on you. You don't talk about my father like that. Fuck you and fuck the fish. All right. All right. We'll just see about that. He sits down and we're going to play. All right. Well, you wanted to bring it. We're going to bring it, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) So remember how I said it was a good time to skip town? (laughs) After this, that's it you're be. skipping. <laughs> We're just victims of your crisis. <laughs> All right, yellow is El Presidente. Green is Freddy the Fish. All right, Frankie the Fisher. So I'm, I'm switching to Frankie, whatever his name is. <laughs> Freddy, <laughs> Frankie, Fish. Frankie, fucking. It's a double left. Yeah, the fish. Double yeah. Left. The yeah. Fish, the fish call me yeah. Fr- yeah. The fish is like the dawn. Yeah. That's what that. So Frankie, the fish's son, is like Frankie the Don's son. Right, basically. All right, so I'm gonna bluff instead. All right. Okay. Here we go. Same thing. Shit. Ten. Muck goes out. Woo. <laughs> okay. He actually won that hand. Wow, that's sad. All right. Cool. Yeah. Let's do it. Everybody's got a bum hand. 23. 23 you wins that hand, and you see El Presidente throws his cards down. What'd I tell you? I'm not. He goes to the dealer. He goes to the dealer. <laughs> I'm not cheating. Oh, you're just bluffing. I'm just bluffing, yeah. He thinks you're still cheating, though. Okay, that's fine. He can if he wants to. I, I have divested all my like myself of all extra cards. I don't have any extra cards anymore. When I switched, like I put them back in the deck. I'm not playing with you again. That is it. It was a pleasure. That is it. That is it. I consider You're that dirty. a tip. You're dirty. <laughs> <laughs> he was not a gracious loser at all. He was not. Yeah. You're yeah. dirty. You're dirty. <laughs> You're dirty. So who's, You're dirty. Whose turn is it? Is it my turn? Is and then it, I'm going to find me, your father. Is it Frankie now? <laughs> it's, it's you and Frankie. Okay. All right, so it's just us. We obviously hate each other. We're probably pulling a little bit of a crowd. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, that is. The crowd's everywhere. The tensions are really high because Frankie is pissed off. And he's just going, I suppose this one's for your father or something, huh? Oh, fuck. 19. You win. <laughs> well... Thanks, Frankie. That's it. Get this motherfucker right now. Wait, did he win? Yeah, I won. Yeah. So I scooped the money. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, we'll go out back. We don't want to ruin the bar. Right, Frankie? Come on, son. No, no, we're going to do this right here, right now. Okay. Roll initiative. <laughs> you right. have advantage on that still. Sweet. No, you don't. Why not? No, Is that's not a... That's not the same thing as oh, Cascrate. Oh, spell? Yeah, that's uh, my... Cleric feature. Nice. So 14 plus 3 is 17. Um, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> Man, this is it's all be, full of words that I'm copying, though. <laughs> okay, here. Wait, hold no, on. I, got, I can do it I, over here yeah, on get, this one. I'll, I'll, tracker. I got to type down. I got to type down. Uh, Frankie Girl's a natural 20. Fuck. I'm I'm back on the old regular dice. Yep. <laughs> oh, you too. <laughs> uh, Josh, one of these guys. Next. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yep. Okay, Ryan. Total of twenty. Okay, Alex. Four. Ryan. Seven. All right. And we got a 15, Ryan, Josh, you were rolled a 14? 
14 plus 3, so 17. That's what I got. I'll just play it straight and... Okay. I should have them all go together, but I won't do that. Is there going to be some bloodshed today? Fuck yes. Yeah, oh my but God. it's going to be my own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, sleep! <laughs> like, chop, chop. Okay. <clears throat> do we have a maybe a sheet of paper I can mm -hmm. keep track of this on? That'd be all right, Just, Brian. Yeah. I'll bring more next time. Yeah, you never have too many pads of paper. You really can't. I don't have any pads of paper. Which is why you don't have enough. You, never, you don't have too many. Okay. Uh. Hmm. All right. Have you ever told us the story about Frankie, or are we just blindsided? We're figuring it out. <laughs> you guys put it together now. Okay. Yeah. As a Kenku, can you mix and match pieces of sentences together? Mm -hmm. Your yeah. words? They're just like, they just change mm -hmm. voices as you go, and it sounds weird, probably. So be like, then I'm going to fuck you, and then I'm going to fuck your father. <laughs> this is all in your voice. It's just nice. different. Yep. I feel like it would still be copied and pasted a little bit. So a little, yeah, bit. little like, clippy. I'm going to fuck you, and then... Uh, I'm going to fuck you, and then I'm going to fuck your you. father. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, he rolled a natural 20. Yeah, so he goes to go first. He stand up. He's on the other side of the table, right? Yep, other side of the table. He's got a crossbow. Cool. He pulls it out. Say hi to your father for me. How far away from him am I, by the way? Just curious. Um, should we get some minis? Like a battle map? Yeah, let's make battle a battle map. map. Battle map. Were you battle map. The crowd, Alex, or were you back at the bar? Um. Well. Sure. See. If there was a uh, <clears throat> if there was like a banister, I could have. I was as close. The normal sitting area to you as I could have been. So I don't know how. I don't think there's a banister. There's just a crowd that was crowded on the table. Mm, okay. That would have been probably nearby you then. Okay. My question, my main thing is if I could have been within five feet. Five feet of you. Right. God, that thing is big. Got wings. You just cut the wings off. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, you don't have wings. Alex, where were you? Uh, I was going to be trying to get as close to him as I could without All being right. not in the crowd, so. Ryan, were you right over him? Yeah, I'm right behind him. Or... Um, I'm, you know, I think we're all pretty close, though. I'm probably between him and Frankie. <laughs> since, so right here. since I was... Between me right. and Frankie, nice. Right. Yeah, yeah, since I was over there talking <laughs> nicely. <laughs> I was trying to defuse the situation. <laughs> sure you were. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to choose for me. Here. You're like oh, the guy in the bomb squad just like, fuck it, and cuts all the wires. <laughs> That's who you are. <laughs> That's the... Sounds about fair. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, fuck it. We're just going to use these three random guys. Don't get a two attached to them. Yep. <sighs> okay, here we go. Say hello to my your father. All right. Ten. Do 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 do. So thirteen hit. So nope. The black tattooed tentacles I have coming down my arm and kind of up around my face flare to life and reach out and grab the crossbow coral in the air and break it. Break it. All right. All right. So then it is Ryan's turn. Or Celeste's turn, I should say. Um. Well. I smile while it happens, and I say, Frankie, I've had an upgrade since the last time we tangled there, friend. Why I oughta. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. You know. She's gonna light a sword on fire. Whoa. Alright, so since, like, <laughs> it's an action. Oh. Bonus action. So she'll lick her thumb and go... Right up the. Uh, He's covered in alcohol. <laughs> Jesus, this is gonna get blown. <laughs> and I'll say. I lean away. I don't know if you want to do that again. And I'll hold my action. If anyone attacks, 
hit him with the rapier. Hit who with the rapier? Any one of them. Oh, any of them attacking him? Yep, if any one of them attacks. I'm just going to be close enough, so I'll close the distance near them. Josh's turn. Fuck all this. Stand up and shoot my chair back. Reach down to my hip. And the shadows around my side under my coat coalesce into a six shooter. I pull out and fan it. Bah! And I shoot that fucker. Okay. Roll to hit. And I yell, now, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff for now. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> so I'm going to shoot at Frankie. 22. 22 hits. Um, oh, sad. That's only six damage. So pow for six. But then... From underneath the table, a massive tentacle erupts and slaps Frankie in the face because Jeff does his transforming big tentacle thing. I summon tentacle of the depths or deeps or whatever. All right. What's is it? It's a bonus action. I make an attack. Okay. And uh, let's see. Mm, Tentacle of the deeps plus seven. So only 13. 13 does not hit. Okay, so it misses. But it's like, makes a grab at him. Okay. He We've dodges out of the way. Before. Yeah, <laughs> you've seen Jeff do his thing. He dodges out of the way, and he goes to Tommy. Tommy, you get him. <laughs> Tommy takes... Come on, Tommy. A lunges over the table, and he's going to... Get a rapier in the throat. <laughs> yeah, he attacks and he's out right. of action. So he lunges over the table and he's going to tackle you to the ground. Okay. Just as he gets there, Ryan's attack goes off. Is that 15, 17? That is a 16 to hit. What ties go to? Ties go Ties to hit. hit. Okay. Ties hit. Mm-hmm. So I will hit him. Sixteen piercing damage. You hold your action as he's lunging. Lunging. But if it kills him, I'd rather make it non lethal. Okay. Because I would. I don't want to kill him. Just as he's about to collapse onto uh, your friend Chance, you unleash your attack. That's right here as he's throwing. Oh, I'm going to give him a nice burn scar across his throat. All right. What's his name? Tommy. Tommy. Tommy's unconscious now. He can't hear you anymore. <laughs> he collapses on to, to Chance. You kind of take a little step back and let him fall right off on you. Now Brian's turn. I'll say something, though, too. I'll be like, not so fast if you want to live. I scoop up all the gold off the table. <laughs> Before it gets knocked over. <laughs> you going to take your action for that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Into like, a bag. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I was going to flip the table. I'll try that later. <laughs> <laughs> now that the gold. What was the other now. guy's name? I can't remember. Well, not Tommy. Frankie. I don't know. Frankie, yeah. Tommy. You just said called Goon. Yeah. All right. You call him whatever you want. Sal. Uh, we're going to call him Bub. Frankie. Hurt from that shot. Mm-hmm. Get that motherfucker, Sal. Get him right now. And he whips out his crossbow. And he takes a shot. Natural 20. Oh. Well, crit bang, crit bang, crit bang. <laughs> that'll do it. So Natural 20. So that is going to be twice the dice. That's you know what? I'm going to take a shot. Twice the dice for is him. twice as nice. Hmm. Oh, thanks, it's man. The Tempest arrow attack? catching. Or, so arrow the catching arrow shield. veers away from me into him. Yep. Can you do that <laughs> as a bonus action? It's a reaction. Yep. All right. So what is what happens? So you just make your damage roll, and I take the damage instead of him. <sighs> Sucks. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's just it was Alex. What's the bonus? You, you would have been fine. <laughs> yeah, right. It'd have been three damage. Three damage as a crit. Well, you can yep. have rolled nothing but ones. Their dexterity. If they have any. They did. did. Okay. That's sad. Wow. One, one, one. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
It's a sad day for the Yeah, so day. it's like, whoop. I think we've outgrown this nemesis. <laughs> he kind of That's why he's a game one nemesis. He kind but of his dad might be somebody his eyes and he starts backing away. Now it's your turn. Beat him with his own arrows. <laughs> um I'm going to test spare the dying on uh, or wait, no. I didn't you, kill. You didn't kill him. Nope. That's right. Okay. I'll do Elo, bring him back. <laughs> I'll have to put him down again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll do bless. Why not? Hey, King Kid. Bless. Uh I can hit three creatures of my choice, so I'll do all three of you. So you get a D4 to any attack rolls or saving throws. Oh, sweet. All right, we'll go back to the top. Son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. You're going to burn in hell. And he takes another shot. Oh, he keeps going. Yeah, he's dumb. Or uh, not going to hit. He rolled... Yeah, he rolled a 12. Okay, nice. so my shadow tentacles reach up and bat it aside out of the air. What's that? The shadow tentacles that are now writhing out of my tattoo smack sure. it aside. Okay, yep. And now we are... He kind of just... He's looking panicked. He's looking frightened, but he still wants to go at it. Now it's Celeste's turn. What is uh, Celeste going? 20. Oh, nice. Still walk up to him. She'll put her rapier right up to him. Do it again. I dare you. You got nothing on me. You hurt me, you're fucked. Maybe just a little. Whap! Oh, shit. <laughs> Maybe just a little. Roll a hit. <laughs> Whack. Uh. 23? Ah, fucking hits. <laughs> it's like a son of a bitch. I'll do non-lethal again. Okay. Six. Thirteen. Uh, Thirteen damage? Thirteen damage. Wait. Oh, yeah. Six, seven, he yeah, six, 13. falls to the ground. Non-lethal? Non-lethal. He falls to the ground. It's all charred up, though, from your... I, I'm gonna swipe him right across the face. I don't leave so him. Now he has got a scar, and it actually goes right through here. And as he's falling, I'm gonna try to catch him a little. Oh wait, wait, wait! Don't don't fall all the way down. It'll uh, be okay. Give me a roll. Uh oh. Can you, you do that with, an, with a sword in your yeah, hands? You botch. Okay. It'll be okay. Oh! oh <laughs> I tell you what, if you botch, he dies. Natural twenty. Okay. Yep. You just gently... Actually, I'm going to set him down. It's okay, it's okay. And I'll stroke his hair. <laughs> it's all right. And I'll just put him right back in the chair where he came from. The dealer's sitting there. And I'll extinguish the blade. <laughs> Wide-eyed. But there's still one guard left. He's looking right at you. One of Frankie's guards? Yep, he's the last guard left. The last goon. Right. Why don't you go home and report to the batting? Uh-uh. I'm not gonna report. I'm not gonna report to no one. You're going down, and he's gonna take his shot. Okay. I mean, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. And one second. What was the bonus there? Sometimes I get swarmed by kids at a playground. Twenty. Too. I'm like, he rolls a twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Is that twenty a crossbow. Yep. I'll take the damage again. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't learn his lesson. Sue. Sue. Do you do that once around? Yeah. Oh, oh wait, reaction. I used my reaction this turn, didn't I? No, I had a mm -hmm. turn in between. Yep. Okay. Yep. okay. So it'd be round. six damage. Okay. But I believe. Oh, your turn. Did I skip you, Josh? Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. That's okay. He should be up there at the top ish. Yeah. So I'm going to put you at there then. I'm going to so shoot sorry. him. I'm going to say, get fucked, friend. Bow! I'm like, get him, Jeffrey. So first, <laughs> I have white dice is me, black dice is Jeffrey. Oh, Jeffrey fails horribly. I get him for a 17. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to shoot him for uh, 11 damage. Wow. 
and he does one of those. Yep. Uh, 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 I'm not dramatic doing, deaths. You can't do non I'm not doing non lethal, <laughs> so you can eat shit and die. I'll cast the Spare the Dying on him when it gets to my turn. And he falls to the ground. Blood starts mm-hmm. pooling under him. And they're all dead. And now it's Brian's turn. Well, they're not dead. There's well, they're, they're Actually, all none down. Of them are dead. Yeah, they're all down. None of them are dead. Um, <laughs> in Chance's voice, say, I'm going to double your money. And then I reach into <laughs> Frankie's pocket and I take, take the gold. All <laughs> this money? Yeah. All right. However um, much he's got in there. He's got he's got a hundred on him. Yes. He's pretty wealthy. How yeah, many people started the game? There was do, 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 ten. There was ten all together. So we nine now have five hundred gold plus Frankie's hundred. If we all had to pony up fifty, yep, we have six hundred gold total. So yeah, I'll grab a I'll grab a hundred, and then I'll just kind of. I mean, consider that a tip. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> the security guard comes up and walks over. This is another night for him. This, yep. has, <laughs> this was not anything out of the ordinary. Sure. Do I get Spare over. the Dying off on the calls, other one? Yep. Okay. Yep, yep, you sure do. The Spare the Dying goes off. I know the I know the gig, friend. We're the just security leaving. Security guards. We're just leaving. Calls over Chuck. Chuck has to give from behind the bar. Sorry, Chuck. Didn't mean to spill all your fine alcohol. Uh, always trouble with you, isn't it? Well, you know. Now I gotta have to carry these guys out back. I can do that for you. I'll just tip the chair over. Thump. <laughs> Body falls out, right? I'll grab him by the collar and just drag him slowly. Kind of out like as he falls to the ground, he hit hard on the on the floor. It definitely broke his nose. Oh, hmm. well, let me right. help you with that. Bow! Grab <laughs> <laughs> by the hair and slam his face into the ground again. And you're going to have to help the guard and Chuck carry the three bodies out to the back for a good night's sleep until they recover. <laughs> you hear Chuck tell uh, the, the the security guard, you know, you're going to have to report this to the guy, you know, like, we can't have this kind of attention, but uh, he's got to know his kids here. And he fucked up again. Security guy's like, yeah. Hey, this dude, guy's always a fuck up. Can you do his favor? He was about a half an hour head start. Appreciate it. Oh, I won't tell anybody until the morning. Don't worry about it. All right, thank you. We don't need any more goings on tonight. When we want to make money and have people come in here tonight, we'll deal with his father tomorrow morning. Appreciate it, friends. Appreciate it. All right. So, what do you guys want to do? Go get some horses and get the fuck out. It's nighttime. <laughs> You've been up all day. Yeah, but I don't want to be sleeping if Frankie finds out from one of the barflies what happened in my house. Sure. Because I know what sure. happens next. Or, yeah, if the fish finds out. If the fish finds out what happened to Frankie and we're just crashed at our pads, I'll tell you guys, the fish won't be very happy. We might want to be scarce for a few days. I'm thinking grab some horses now. Uh, high on out into the wilderness as much as I hate to say it spend the night among the roots and the chipmunks just so we could stay away from the fish or what do we call your little area Grove, Grove of the Ancients Grove, Grove of, the, of Ancients. the Ancients you know that there's a, a stable uh, right as you leave the Grove of the Ancients uh uh, and usually people go there to rent horses to kind of trot around the, the paths mm. and, the, and the grove and everything like that. Usually they don't rent out horses for more than a day or two, though. Well, we're not so, looking to rent. Oh, we're looking to buy. We want right. to purchase. In fact, That's the why don't we place. take the money and split it up four ways now, and then we can meet at the stable. I got to run by my place and pick up my stuff. Oh, that sounds yeah, good to me. I will do as well. How much gold did you get? Well, I five hundred. Mm-hmm. I should have gotten five hundred out of that. So that leaves us all one hundred twenty-five. Well, I'll have to give it to you. You did double our money and some. Told you'd be fine. 
I'll add 125. <laughs> He's not adding one. He's adding. He's lines adding two twenty five. Is what he's adding. <laughs> <laughs> he's adding two twenty five. Because mm-hmm. I didn't count what you pulled off, Frankie. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just gonna buy everyone an extra horse. So don't worry about it. <laughs> extra. We don't need extra horse. I don't want an extra horse. <laughs> no, I just want the one horse. I do want my own horse, though. Yeah, I figure we can all afford to get our own horses now. Oh, yeah. Told you I'd double your money. And then some, turns out. You did good, Chance. All right, let's get the hell out of here before the mm. fish finds us. We'll run by the house to pick up our belongings. You need us to pick you up anything, Knox? You come with us to the store to grab your stuff? Uh, I don't know if I need anything really from the well, store. Why I have don't most you, of the stuff on me. Why don't you stick with Orb just in case the fish finds us early? And uh, me and Celestia run by the shop, pick up what we need, meet you guys at the stable. How's that sound? Sounds good. All right. And I'll cast your wounds on myself, by the way. I'm actually going to compose a letter. Okay. Quickly. And I'll pay the postage to get it ran to the other side of town. Sure. And it'll be to my two younger twin brothers. Okay. I want them to... Well, we have a few shelters that we've been to in the past. Mm Mm-hmm. I'll let them kind of know the situation and find shelter. Okay. Excellent. So you get that sent off. Mm-hmm. And the courier goes straight right away to them. They'll probably receive it. I'm I'll gonna pay, if it's I'll not pay, too uh, late, they'll deliver it in the morning. I'll pay double whatever it is to get it done tonight. Okay. And Just I, a cup of copper, or whatever. I'm gonna write a note too, and <laughs> it's gonna read, "Fuck you, Frankie." I'm going to pin it to my headboard before he comes looking for me and I'm not here. Sure. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Can you gather anything from your nest? Yeah. I mean, I, I might as well bring, you know, some paper and notebooks, um, a sleeping bag. Yeah. We're yeah. going to go camping. Uh, and Knox, you probably want to hang a close sign on your Mm -hmm. and this is probably pretty exciting for you to get to go along right Mm -hmm. you want want to go on these adventures yeah my old group left me high and dry in the town do you think we could requisition a couple of those lanterns you grab a couple of firefly lanterns sure Oh, yeah. cause so did I. <laughs> <laughs> we all pull out. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? I said that I was. He not, go I had all the stuff going, so I'm going with him. So I'll just ask you to lock up for me and put a closed sign on a few windows. I do. All right. Yep. And so you find a, you'll find a stable. Uh, I'll grab a bullseye lantern for each of us too. And how much did we say a horse was worth? 50 gold. 50 gold? I got four horses. Mm. Hell yeah. I'll spend my 50 gold. Do you want to go in on a horse and share one? Because you're kind of slight, and I'm not too heavy. We could probably get a horse to carry both of us and save a little bit of coin for gambling later. Sure. Yeah. We, we could split it. Go in together on a horse and split some money. All right. So I only spent 25. Man, and I really wanted to shop the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with gold. Too bad. Are there any cities on the path between here and. Mm. Okay. It's going to be a pretty quiet journey. I doubt that. Right. <laughs> So it's eleven seventeen. Yep. This is a pretty good place to stop for right now. Mm-hmm. Wow! Just like you planned, right? <laughs> I thought like you think you're gonna get so much further. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's case. the way it works. Yeah, and like it's hard because I don't want to like, especially for the first session, you don't want to get past maybe some character traits and development and mm-hmm. see who everybody is and give it. Time? You're always going to get less far than you think. Yeah. yeah. Which is okay with the players. It feels like it's not okay for the DM sometimes. 
But this game was perfectly paced for me, anyways. It was mm -hmm. good pace. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Well, let's Frank start. Here. Let's start with yeah, like roses Frank. and thorns, and then yeah, Josh will go. Start with you. I'm glad I got to shoot Frankie. That was fun. <laughs> um, also, it was cool to win the game. I didn't think I was going to win for sure. I was like, I'm going to get fucked. Especially when you lost advantage. Yeah, I was like, and done. But uh, no, it, it worked out all right. Um, let's see, thorns. Ah, I wish the, I wish the cougar had a uh, shiny places, shiny things, whatever the fuck her Valerie. Yeah, I wish she was available. I'm gonna keep trying with her, <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ryan. Ryan, uh, roses. I mean, I think the whole game was really good. Mm -hmm. Um, I like, I always love a good session one. So much that you can do, and it's kind of getting your feet wet, like, mm -hmm. which is also my point. I don't quite have my feet under my character yet. What is she all about? Sure. A little bit. I'm getting there, but it'll take a little while, I think. Um, but highlight moments, slapping down a couple goons like they're nothing. That's always mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. uh, Back to your level great three, for me. right? Mm -hmm. Your level three. So it's well with the items we're probably a bit advanced for level. Oh yeah, yeah. These yeah. items make. Oh, yeah. In fact, one of my items completely overshadows one of my class features, and I don't even care. It's What's awesome. the item? Flame oh, tongue rapier. It's one of my things that you can things make is I can damage. cut myself or make myself bleed for more damage. A whole d4, mm -hmm. and yeah. my flame tongue's like two d6. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Which I'm fine with that though, because it actually goes with my character not trying to give him hmm. that hemocraft or that like entropy. Sure. But my rose is I really like um, backstory and corporations. That's mm. probably one of my favorite things about the games that we ever play. <laughs> so that's fun. Yep. All right, Alex. Uh, I like that I got to use my shield twice. Yeah, right? It was, uh, I was hoping for it being like a 19 so that I, or a, a 18 so I could actually block it rather than taking damage, but it was interesting to absorb a crit for somebody and also absorb another hit. So, yeah, it was an interesting one. I'm, uh, I'm playing a cleric and I, I think it's not how clerics would normally play. Right, right. Cool. Did you did you say thorn? Uh, thorn. Um, the only thing I could think of is maybe the enemies were a little bit too easy. But then again, session one, we're kind of testing waters. Yep. Seeing how it goes, so I can understand why. Yep. There could be a lot of reasons why. Maybe Frankie is just the fish, and the real fish is gonna. Yeah, his dad's going to stomp our nutsack, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why I wrote the letter. I was like, fuck, man, they killed your dad before you even got out of the game. Yep. I was like, get my friends and family away from me. Well, I guess I have my friends. Out. You guys. Yeah, we are your friends. That's we're leaving. You. Yeah, we are. <laughs> get the fuck out. All right. Brian? I had tons of things that I enjoyed about this. I love a good session one. Um, particularly the figuring out characters. I I had no idea until like the first rolls what um, Orb's personality was gonna feel like, and he pretty quickly became kind of a like I was pulling on like the Tom Holland Spider Man, mm. the new one a lot, just like just always real excited about you know helping and hanging out with Mister Stark and stuff but not really being very good at anything yet. Um, so, and I, I don't even remember the first things, but that just happened to be on my mind when you said something or you said something right at the beginning and it just kind of happened. Um, I think it was maybe when you were handing me comic books or something. Um, so finding those things is always fun and, um, we have a surprisingly cohesive unit, which doesn't make any sense <laughs> <laughs> and can't last anywhere near long enough. It can but, last session one. But it's, That's yeah, not true. We're pretty good. <laughs> Come on, we're going to be all right. Um, 
Why would you say yeah. that? I don't know. I, I'm sure long term it would be a problem if it was the same breakdown every game. But for one session where it was mostly antics and free form riffing, I don't think I have any thorns. Yeah. yeah. I wanted it to be. I, I wanted to get further. Sure. Definitely. But I wanted to make sure that everybody had a good feel for their character. And the first. Now I'm thinking maybe this is gonna take a longer than I thought it was gonna. There take. you go. Yeah, right? it's gonna. Hey, be... we're all okay with that. And yeah. you're not. Right. And I'm okay with. Do we it. level up? No. <laughs> Don't do that. no. And that's a question you'll get after no. every session. I'm sure. Yeah. From one of us. I'm sure. Um, so I won't be the one. <laughs> I got you. When... <laughs> what was your roses and thorns? Um, so my thorn is, I didn't get to everything I wanted to get to, but, uh, my rose is, it went way better than I thought it was going to go to. Like, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I can keep it up like where it's an interesting to you and I'm really excited to show you what happens. We're excited to find out what happens. Yeah, yeah I mean, let's do it. That's it. So, uh, Thorn, not getting to everything. Rose is, it didn't crash and burn in the first session. So, there we go. Ooh, you did fine. Yeah, yeah. it was good. Great, dude. There are a few things I enjoyed that you did that, like, oh, I didn't even expect that. Like, um, Oreb's bright, shiny neon smile after mm -hmm. eating all the fireflies. That was funny. Mm -hmm. I tried to... I try to pull, like, obviously, my the two DMs that I've had. So it's going to be a lot of Josh and a lot of Ryan in this game. And I'm going to probably mesh a lot of influences. The Flyerfy thing was definitely a DM Ryan thing. I was like, I'm sure you, Josh, would have said something like that, but you're really descriptive. Probably so I try yeah. to be descriptive, like the musty smells and shit. I don't even do that enough. But like, getting the smell. Sound, sight, like getting all the senses in there is hard when you're DMing. Yeah, yeah, because you're like the carpet's red. What does it smell like? I don't know. What does a red carpet smell like? Smells like red, like? right? Do the yeah. colors smell different to you? Yeah, I don't understand <laughs> right. where that comes from, but that's fine. <laughs> all right, that's it. I'm getting buzzed from Elmily, so I gotta leave pretty soon. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining us. For um, thank yeah. you, Dead Heart and Alien and Red Bull True for your comments they said it was a great first session so you got mm. some good feedback for your first campaign first session matt thank you There's some people that uh enjoyed it a lot oh excellent we'll come and back we'll, we'll be back here next sunday to kick frankie's ass wait frankie's dad's ass frankie's dad the fish that's right we'll get our asses kicked by, by the fish dad. yeah <laughs> we'll see you guys badly. same time next week all right